Better have a little more pull in that, boys. <laughs> yeah, this is Dusty Rose, the American Dream, right here in Tomo, Wisconsin. The Dairyland Super Pull, the best and granddad ever of all, coming up. A week away also from picking the final members of the Dream Team. It's going to be excitement right here in Tomo, Wisconsin. Next, on Moda. Madness! Tonight, the cranberry capital of Wisconsin becomes the ground-pounding center of the universe. Live on TNN Motorsports, it's the number one truck and tractor pull in the world. The NTPA Dairyland Super Pull. Hear the power, feel the noise from Recreation Park in Toma. To introduce our first class of the evening, well, here's that classy guy, Dan Pastorini. Well, thanks, Steve. We're definitely going to hear the power and feel the noise tonight. And there's no better class than the unlimited class for raw power. We'll see combinations of four and five supercharged Chevy, Chrysler, and Oldsmobile, and a mixture thereof, as well as a silent thunder of three and four jet turbines, all of which put out between 10 and 12,000 horsepower. Now, if you remember, back in the 70s, the Allison aircraft engines were the kings of the sport. But as the NTPA evolved, technology took over, and the higher RPM engines have made the Allisons under horsepowered in class. So if it's power you want, we've got power tonight. Steve? I can't think of a better way to start this unlimited class than with Mike Piper of Mount Vernon, Illinois. And Mike has a brand new Synergen Just Add Dirt Tractor. Untried, this will be his first hook to the sled. And the sled, of course, is the object of uh, everybody's attention, trying to get that thing down this very, very good course. In fact, Dusty Rhodes, I talked to a lot of the pullers, and they unanimously say that consistently, year in and year out, this is the best track they pull on. Well, I know in the back, the excitement's running rapid. The ground's getting ready to shake. The earth is going to tremble as they go for that coveted full pull tonight. Now, these are five engines, four are Arius, and one is a JP-1. He didn't use five Arius because the tractor would be too heavy. There's no minimum weight. There is a maximum weight because weight is a huge advantage in this sport, unlike any other form of motorsports. And the action they pack into 300 feet right in front of this crowd is unbelievable. There's his wife, Barb, looking on. Now, he will be the test puller. If Mike doesn't like this pull, he can throw it out. Has to make up his decision right away. He can throw it out and drop to six. If he likes it, fine, he takes it and stands on that number. Yeah, he can stand down. He can go ahead, but he's got to go. As soon as it's over, got to say, I want another one. I'm going to stand on this one. That's right. And that's what it's all about tonight. Standing on it, baby. Listen to this thing. Five motors. The amount of methanol fuel that goes to those engines is just unbelievable. Well, Taking the slack out of the chain. Yeah, I tell you what, everybody's sitting on ready the first, first pull. Here we go. You're on board the late day for my on this flag. That's what makes this one work. All right, the crowd roars its approval. He is very likely to take this poll. In fact, I would almost guarantee he will take this poll. He got up on top of it from the get-go, brought it all the way down. What power. The whole ground, guys, is just trembling. Not these things fire off. Not to mention our table here at home base and our monitors walking all over. Now, balance is absolutely every 323 feet and change. Tremendous balance. Got the weight transfer just right. Let's have a look at it again. Dan Pastorini joins us. Going on Back forward, Dante. Yeah, he's got, he's got his weight transfer real good here. He's smoothed into the throttle. He didn't nail it too hard. He's got the front wheels up a little bit, getting the weight transfer on the rear tires real good here. And he's got a good, solid pull going. 323 feet for the first pull. This is a new rig for him, too, so I'm sure he's happy with the way it's working. Oh, he's got to be thrilled to death. The brand new Just Add Dirt Tractor sets the mark. We'll be right back to Toma after this. Welcome back to the grandest truck and tractor pull of them all. The Dairyland Super Pull, a huge crowd on hand, and we are really looking forward to this. We've seen one pull already, and uh, we're pretty darn excited about it. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Evans, Dan Pastorini, and Dusty Rhodes here at home base. 
And, Dan, it isn't just the Unlimiteds. We've got a huge three-hour package tonight. No, that's right. You know, we've got the two-wheel drives, and then we've got the super rigs or the big rigs later on. The two-wheel drive uh, vehicles are kind of like the funny cars in drag racing, if you will. They're pretty exciting to watch. They do the great wheel stands with a lot of horsepower for single-engine vehicles. Oh, yeah, and the wheel stands are terrific. And, Dusty, knowing you, you have got to have some surprises for us as we look at the uh, two-wheel drive trucks. Where do you see these babies? We didn't have them on our show last year. What have you got for us tonight? Well, I tell you what, when we arrived here, there were thousands of people waiting in line because they knew they were getting ready to see some full pull. But the question that me and Dante, because we was walking in there together with us, did you bring them? Are they here? Are they? Are we going to get a look at them? Yes, I did. A little traveling music. The American Dream Girls are right over here, brother. Yes. That's my baby girl. Look at them. Yeah, Darcy, Stancy Dad, Crystal, and Kim. They love them here. I'm telling you. He's done it again, Dan. Oh, I know. They just, uh, he's Hi, like ladies. Whoa, Welcome. Man. Come on in. He's like a fly well, to sugar. It's unbelievable. Oh, sugar daddy. That makes his money. Big old daddy, I'm telling you. <laughs> right here, the excitement is ready to roll tonight. The dream girls are here. Dante's here. Steve is here. And you know what? If these girls can't make a full pull, nobody can. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, let's talk about a full pull yes. and exactly what that means. This is the traditional 300-foot NTPA course. A little different tonight, though. The full pull doesn't automatically put you into a pull-off. The three longest distances will put you in a pull-off, which is why you'll see them go not just 300 feet, but 320, 330, whatever they can get out, because the top three in the unlimited class will come back for a pull-off. Same holds true in the two-wheel drive class. When we get to the diesel trucks, well, the longest pull wins. No pull-off. And pull that makes it a little bit more exciting for the fans, too. They're able to see the, the, the trucks have a pull-off situation and not just the ones that go the full distance. Yep. So the best-performing ones uh, are the ones that will do it. I think Dave Burns has something for us down there. Well, David? Well, we obviously have some problems with... Uh, with uh, David's uh, mic there, Steve. You know, I think that first unlimited tractor yeah. might have finished off his microphone. Yeah. He was about three feet from it. I'll tell you what, I was standing right in front of the thing when he started that motor, and I, you know, I'm used to these motors, but it kind of scared me when it started up. And up next is Bill Leishner, and he has to take this pull. The, the trial pull is over, and nobody really likes to pull second, Dan. No, they don't. at least if you pull first, you've got another shot if the sled is wrong. If you pull second and the guy throws out the pull, they change the sled up. This is a tough situation. Bill is very glad that the previous puller took that pull. That's right, and, and it's a difficult pull uh, situation for him because he's got to make a good pull here to get in the pull off. 323 and a half feet's a long pull right for Mike Piper. Feet. Oh, baby. You know, you got to be ready to go. You know, he, he's into farming and trucking, but tonight he's into full pulling. Some of these guys right here tonight may be finalists for that American Dream Dusty Road team that we're going to be announcing on a special next week, but guys, it's going to be a good one, Steve. Oh, yeah, these are three 572 cubic inch areas racing engines. And it's really not power so much as it is wheel speed. And you'll see wheel speed of, well, about 160 miles an hour. The tractor may be going 30 or 40. The wheel speed is what matters. That's right, but he's such an exceptional driver. Here we go, here we go. It's a little nose heavy. He missed the balance just a little bit. The front end was lazy in coming up. By the time it did in weight transfer, it was a little too late. And I'm sure Bill knew that up uh, on top of that tractor, that that was not exactly what they wanted. They have all kinds of suitcase weights they can move around on these things. And uh, they could have used a couple of hundred pounds off the nose of that tractor. And he was really, he was on the brakes from the get-go, Steve. You'll see him in the cockpit here. He's working the brake real hard, which is it's hurting his momentum getting going and getting that sled going. He also gives up a little bit of power disadvantage here with only three motors. He's given up about three or 4,000 horsepower here to the other guys. You can see him get sideways there. He grabs a hold of the brake to bring it back to center here. Almost crossed the center line in it. Did a great job getting that thing down the track. He's one of the best drivers Dante, out here. Dante, let me ask you a question too for the layman at home. I thought he dug a hole when he come out. I mean, such a thing as getting too deep in the hole, not getting up on top of the ground. And, and, and you're right about that, but I guarantee you, there's a lot of them might be digging holes tonight. Well, that's true. You know, he just kind of got, he got a bad, a bad start there, and, and he just couldn't get going. That's right. And I doubt that that is going to make it in the pull-off. I really would no. think that uh, there'll be two runs better than that or two pulls better than that to make the unlimited pull-off. Big disappointment for Bill, but hey, you know. Well, he's, he, like I said earlier, he's respected as one of the best drivers out here, and he's got a little bit of disadvantage from a horsepower standpoint. 
but what he makes up in, in the ballast and the driving ability is different. Notice something else. Our first two pullers have lined up to the right. That is their option. They can put the sled wherever they want it. And that's because there's a little bit of a slope at about oh, 180 feet on this track that wants to drive the tractor to the left. So you'll see the pullers that notice that, is, if I notice it, they did, <laughs> they will line up to the right and let it drift to the left. Because if you cross those chalk lines, you're out of here. If you even touch them, you're out of here. That's right. Well, we're going to come back here for more of the NTDA Dairyland Super Bowl right after a few messages. Stay with us. It's going to get really nuts. Welcome back, everyone. You're just in time to see our third unlimited competitor of tonight. And remember, the top three in pulling distance go into a pull-off. And this is Multi Chaos. That's the name of the tractor owned by Randy Petro of Camden, Ohio. And this is one on you, a feat of engineering, Dan Pastorini. Yeah, it's a little bit different look from the uh, inline motors, if you will, as, uh, compared to the transverse uh, mounting of his motors. He tries to get his uh, traction go back to his uh, rear tires a little bit quicker. You know, Randy Petro is a respected veteran on the NTPA circuit with over 20 years of competition under his belt. In 1997, he was named the Hard Charger of the Year for his aggressive attack off the line. And if there is a secret to Randy's success, it can be summed up in one word, power. Randy Petro and his son Jess operate their very successful pulling teams from their Camden, Ohio home. Like all pullers, they are constantly searching for ways to find more power. Yes, we got to come up with a way to get the fifth motor on this tractor. Well, there's that Aries engine back in the shop. Yeah, but it's too heavy. We can't make weight. So we need something lighter? Yep. Would a small block work? Yeah, that'd work if we had one. We do have one. Hey, we do. Mom's truck! You know, Dad, this is going to be a good idea. I think this will really work. Yeah. What do you guys think you're doing? You might pick up a loan. Or do something useful, like mow the yard. <laughs> I don't think what they did that lawnmower is what Kathy had in mind. And look at this. We got an onboard shot from Randy Petro and Multi Chaos. You watch the ground start to shake in the shimmy right here. Get ready to stand on it one more time. Oh, baby. Oh. Nose heavy again. Missed yeah. that balance. A little bit nose heavy. I think he was trying to compensate for the uh, mounting of his engines, transferring all that weight to the rear tires, as we spoke of earlier. He did have a little bit of problem getting that front end up, and it just uh, didn't, didn't get a chance to really hook up. And you know what? It didn't have the torque. Those engines didn't sound as crisp as I've heard them in the past. It no, didn't quite have the torque, and that's like we said. It's the wheel speed, and you get that with torque. Yeah. You, know, you know what, Dante? Sometimes you talk about having too much weight. Too, too much on board, and I think maybe right here you get a look at yep. this might be too much You're right. on board. And, and, or, or down on power. Either yeah. one, you know, it's yeah. causing that front end to kind of bobble a little bit, and he's not able to get the, the weight transfer to the rear tires like he'd like to. So he's kind of lazy coming off there. Now we see him get a little bit sideways. Well, yeah. That could be the drift that, that Steve alluded to earlier. Right. But, uh, you know, he just had a combination of things right there. It's a new setup for him, and it's very difficult when you try new things, and, and I'm sure he's going to get the, he's on the right track here. All right, let's check in with Dave Burns. Dave, are you there, son? Yes, this time I believe I am, Steve, <laughs> and I believe we have a, a full pull on my equipment now. Randy, not quite, but it looks strong. Got a little drifting there. You really had to play with the brakes, didn't you? Yeah, we had to hit the brakes pretty good there, and I don't know. It's still a, this, I don't know. It seems like we had one motor fluttering quite a bit there, but uh, we're a little bit horsepower short on this class, but it's, it's a decent run. How is the track? Does it feel pretty uh, sticky for tonight? Yeah, it's uh, going to be a pretty good big tire track, I believe, but uh, the smaller tires, the two-wheelers, won't be quite as good, but it, it'll probably come around here once the big tires will make a track for the little guys. All right, Randy Petro, no doubt, guys, there will be a great show tonight. He could yeah. still get in the pull-off. Here you're looking at this awesome four-turbine engine tractic of Gardner Stone. Can you believe that so far? The mark to beat is 268.4 feet. Can Stone do it? He ought to be able to with four Chinook helicopter motors. Stay with us. We'll be back to Doma. Dream Girls will tell you. ExperienceCountry.com your personal source for all things country. From race cars to country stars, connect to country.com. 
All right, guys, the big three are left in this unlimited category, and this is Gardner Stone. Look, what a view from up there, Dave. That looks like the inside of an F-14 fi uh, fighter, whatever those things are called. He's a car dealer from Middlebury, Vermont, and the nice thing about these turbines, very low maintenance. Sometimes they don't put quite the power of the internal combustion engines, but the other guys kind of, well, they kind of envy the lack of maintenance that Gardner has to do. Now, he told me that he thought this track was very fair for both styles of tractors. Sometimes there's a turbine track, and sometimes there's a piston engine track. He thought this one uh, showed no favorites. I'll tell you what, you guys, though, he's no stranger to victory lane. You know what I'm talking about. Big time winner. This is unbelievable, guys. Whoa, man. Go we'll light the sky up right here. Yes, he will. Yes, He's going to light will. it up. He's definitely not hurting for horsepower with these four engines. No. I mean, it's capable of 12,000 horsepower. He had a little, he had oh. a little uh, problem over here last year, if you remember, in the final against Rodland yeah. Knox. And he couldn't get that one engine fired. But yeah. You, uh, you were down there, and they, they had some uh, mechanism to show the uh, compressor stall. Now right. they've got little instruments on each motor that tell them what's happening. Compressor, these are the same motors used in today's unlimited high. Oh, man, you can feel the heat right here. You can see it. Watch the oh. fire. Watch the fire. Oh, man. Look at that red. Look at that red. Whoa. Hold out the ballpark. Oh, baby. That, Pull it out of the ballpark. That virtually assures Gardner Stone. Whoa. A spot in the pull-off. That got right. He was having to use the brakes very, very hard. Yeah. Yeah. And when those wheels are in the air, they steer just like your old grandpa's Ford tractor. You got a left brake and a rear no. brake, independent rear brake. Yeah, but Dante's grandpa's Ford tractor didn't have them engines on it like that. I guarantee you. <laughs> you could have plowed the lower 40 real yeah. quick, huh? That's a pull. Cool. Okay, let's have a look at what happened. He just knows heavy, absolutely. Yep. But well, still, the raw power pulled it through for Gardner Stone. I thought for a minute he was going to suffer the fate of the two previous pullers, didn't you, Dan? Yeah, and, and you know he really had to get on those brakes hard. You know, these engines, once they're on, they're on, Steve. You can't really feather the throttles in those things like you can the piston engine. And he was uh, heavy onto the brakes. But I tell you, that a huge great pull. power. I think with, with some adjustments to that tractor, Gardner Stone could pull it into the next county. Dave Burns? Well, for Gardner Stone, that looked about the way it was supposed to be done. Put the hammer down and just keep her going. Was that flawless from your side, Gardner? Yeah, we are just trying to keep it in bounds. It got a little close on the right-hand side, but I had to stay close to the right side in order to be able to get it out. You're a guy that loves power. What's this I hear about maybe you going offshore power boating? Is that going to happen anytime soon? We've been building a boat for two and a half years with twin turbines in it. Hopefully it'll be done this winter. I can't wait to try it. If it flies, I think Gardner's going to be in it, guys. Gardner loves speed. General, the general. Okay, and here is one of the winningest tractor drivers of all time. That is Dave Walsh, and he is going to be up next. The grain farmer from Moston, Wisconsin, and he could indeed set a new record here tonight. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Demo Derby fans. Just a reminder that the Motor Madness Demolition Derby Series comes to a screeching, crashing finish with the Intergalactic Crunch-Off. And this year, the Intergalactic Crunch-Off 2 will be held at the 81 Speedway in Wichita, Kansas. So make your plans now to be with us Friday night, October 30th. Ooh, scary. That's Halloween weekend. For the biggest and scariest event in Demolition Derby, the Intergalactic Crunch-Off number 2. All right, we are back at the biggest power and truck and tractor uh, pull in the entire world. This is certainly the fans' favorites, and this is the Walsh Brothers, Dan, the Irish Challenger. The Irish Challenger. I have a little bit of Irish in me, as you know, and I'm, I'm pulling for this young laddie to make a full pull is here. That, is that true? Yes. Is that, is that true? <laughs> Brother, he can pull, I guarantee it. You said you laid it out. One of the, one of the biggest names in this great sport. Dave Walsh getting ready to do it right here. 20 What's years. Constant native, 20 years. 20 years Almost as long as you played in the NFL. Almost. Almost as long as I've been born. It? Well, what is that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Pastor oh. Andy, that's two great lies. Irish. I, yeah. And I, A. I'm, I'm Pastor Andy from Tuscany and Genoa. And then I'm, uh, I'm uh, County Cork, Ireland, Brady. My mother, my mother would have you. Well, this is Walsh out of Moston, Wisconsin. He's only got three of those turbines. Remember, we saw Gardner Stone yeah. with four. Yeah. But he's also had the benefit of yeah. watching four previous pullers who may be able to help him get that thing done. Let me ask you something, Dante. Is the track now starting to take a toll? Is it a, a different groove? Will they get in a different groove here? 
What, Steve? Are you reading? You know, Dave Walsh is considered one of the local boys at this NTPA event. He grew up just down the road, about 30 miles from Toma, in the town of Moston, Wisconsin, surrounded by a strong family that loves pulling. At the Walsh farm, they grow three things, corn, soybeans, and champion pullers. The Walsh family runs an extremely successful farming operation and grain business. And over the years, they've also created a name for themselves in the world of truck and tractor pulling. You know, Dave, the whole family's proud of you, the way you've been doing in the past in the limited class and uh, with your national titles. And this year, you're on your way, a good start for another one. Well, you know, our family's very proud of you. In that tour drive class, there's a lot of tough competitors, and you've been do doing some excellent driving. You know, but we kind of owe it all to Dad. He taught us the basics, uh, even with James and John in the past. They were the champions. Yes, he's been very hard on us, but he's been a good coach, and he taught us a lot of fundamentals of pulling. Dave and Dan, how many times have I told you got to practice? The basics, the fundamentals of pulling is practice, practice, practice. So, let's go! Oh, oh not, not again! again. Uh. Oh, you got to do it. You got to pull harder. You got to pull harder. Dave, you're behind. Dave, get going there. Well, let's oh, see yeah. if the, we have a new hammer. We yeah. have. Let's see if the practice pulling paw around the farm. Take a look at this here. right here, guys. Once again, getting ready to rock and roll right here. I guarantee it. This is going to be big time pull. Wait. Look at this three thing. Look like one tub. Look how they turn color there, that bronze is color. There's a lot of heat coming out of there. Look at the thrust of those things. Got to get up on top now. There he goes. Got a run on it, baby. Oh, he's got a good run going. Yeah. He's got a good one. Whoa! Somebody stop me! Somebody stop me is right. Yeah. Look at that. Oh. There we go. Yeah, that Irish, he's had a little that Irish libation, maybe, you know. That uh, me and you gonna have afterwards. Hey, that's what he put into the engine. That's I hear you. Thing. Well, the Irish Challenger was apparently up to the challenge. We'll have to wait officially. It's a laser measurement, so it's right. I mean, accurate to the tenth of an inch. Here he goes. He's got a little slingshot on the old slide there on the on the uh, sled. He's got a good run going. Wheels are on the ground right now, but it's really got good tire spin. As you can see, those tires spinning at better than 160 miles an hour. At first, I thought maybe it was a little nose-heavy, but if you look, uh-uh, he had that balance nailed. Yes, he did. Good pull, good strong pull. When he got about half-track here, he was really moving. Yeah, you see him right up on top here, getting a little sideways right here, but I think good. you're right. Let's, Let's go down to David and see what uh, what uh, Mr. Walsh has to say. David? We will ask him. Dave Walsh, the first member of the Walsh brothers to go out tonight, and he in the unlimited class. Dave, how did that feel? It looked a little bit tough there near the end. Well, I want to go straighter. It pulled me left here, and uh, that's why I didn't want to do it, because I think this left side of the track is a little bit softer. But if I get in the pull-off, I'll make a totally different run than this one. Well, okay. We'll send it back upstairs. Thank you, Dave Burns. A great effort. And you know, last year, what a magic moment we had towards the end of the show when Rodalyn Knox, the country girl, won the unlimited class. And it was special for Rodlin because she did not compete in 96 after winning the 95 National Championship. Now, here was the pull. One year ago tonight, that won it all for Rodlin Knox. After a year out of action, she came back and hadn't lost a step. Her son, Brian, her husband, John, had the tractor perfect, and she was bought, but she had not yet won. There, she knew she had won when the Arfon Sturman was enough to besting her mark, and the lady, the country girl, gave her husband a big country hug. And you know what? She's ready to try to repeat that title here in Toma. Stay with us when we come back. Can the only lady national champion ever in this sport win again? Valentine in Motorsports in Toma, Wisconsin. Before we see our last unlimited competitor, let's check out our Miller News and Notes. Points going into this weekend series point after the Pocono 500. Jeremy Mayfield, so glad now to not only lead the points, but have won his first race, a very popular victory. Jeff Gordon trails him in the Winston Cup points by, well, as you can see, they're a little over one, a little, yeah, a little over 100 points. All right, next up, it is going to be Bobby Labonte, Jeff Burton. You can kind of follow along there. And you know, here, we're going to get a shot of our Senegin winner oh, circle. There they are. That's There's my girl, the right girls there, Green Team. For tonight's NTPA Budweiser Dairyland Super Bowl. Everybody hopes they end up there tonight for the Senegin Cup trophy. And there's a lot at stake beside the cash and bragging rights with these pullers. Some of tonight's winners will also receive very valuable gift certificates for additional prize sponsors, Crane Cams, our friend Mike, and the guys at Jet Hot Coatings. And all the NTPA pullers are thrilled to have the support of these respected names in the automotive industry. And going to be really glad to have Dusty's Dream Girls. You know, here's the dream lady in this sport, Rattle and Knox. 
trying to make it two in a row. Can she get in the pull-off? Well, she's been pulling for eight years, and as you said earlier, Steve, she had that layoff last year. I got to tell you something. Her son, Brian, crew chief, is scared to death of the tires on this tractor. They have never been run. They are brand new, and he's worried that he doesn't have the right air pressure in them. Uh, these tires were purchased three years ago for $5,600 and then set out in the New Hampshire weather to cure for three years. Well, we're going to try them out right now. They get, they're out of the New Hampshire weather. They into the heat. Come on, baby. Whoa. Whoa. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be close to the pull-off. She had it right. She had that thing sideways. And you know what? They thought that tractor was going to go to the left. Yeah. And it did exactly the opposite. Hook to the right. She wasn't ready for it because I know I heard her son Brian say, Mom, line to the right and be prepared to go left. Well, she didn't quite get there, but what are, you know, that's a good pull, I guarantee you. Take a look back here now. Will the spear coming off, Dante? Yeah, she's hooked up here pretty good. But she gets moving yeah. to the right here. She starts correcting. Yeah, right in here. That yeah. right it up looks like a real up. good smooth ride here, but then as that sled comes up and loads her in, now all of a sudden it's kicking right. It just hooked right, and yeah. she was waiting for it to go left. Yeah. She was trying to hang on to that uh, slope over here, but unfortunately it just didn't hook up for her the right way. That's a shame. And yeah, I got it right there. Look at that. Yep, I got a feeling Mike uh, may have been right. He just doesn't have enough experience with those tires. Let's go down to Dave Burns. Well, we'll talk to Rodlin and just ask her. Sometimes, Rodlin, you can set up and think you know exactly what it's going to do, and it does the opposite. Is that what happened here? Well, we put new tires on here, and um, I think we just didn't have the balance quite right. It just didn't get a real good start off the starting line, but the Mopar engines ran really strong, and um, we'll be back another day. All right, Rodlin, she's still pleased with the run, guys. Well, I think she should be, yeah, Dan, she even should, though she yeah. didn't make the pull-off. It's still with brand-new tires and uh, early on in the season for her. She's looking pretty good. Yeah, she's looking real good. You know, she's had this uh, the sponsorship just come on board now. And they got a little bit more money involved, and they're uh, they're happy. They're doing a good job with it. All right. Go take a look here now. Gardner Stone, Dave Walsh, and Mike Piper, those are the three that will make the pull-off. A little bit of a surprise, I think, that Rodlin Knox is not in there. Yeah. Now, understand, between now and the pull-off, they go to that weight transfer device, a.k.a. known as a sled, and there's a lot of things they can do. They can put more weight into the box that transfers. They can also transfer the box faster. Yep. I guarantee you, they'll make it a serious challenge. There is yep. a little bit of weight they're going to add. And I tell you what, every one of these guys that are running right here in these finals are really up for grabs for members of the American Dream Team that will be named at that special next Friday night. I guarantee you don't want to miss the girls in the back. What excitement we have running rampant right here. Big special next Friday. Dream team will be complete. And you know what? You two guys might be close to being on that thing, and you know. On the team. Oh, yeah. On the team. Big, really? Yeah, hat, shirt. I get a hat. <laughs> and opportunity. What a guy. I get a hat. And shirt. And shirt. But you and can't make me shoes. My feet are too big. I know that. <laughs> okay, stay yeah. with us, everybody. Yeah. We're going to be right back to Toma, Wisconsin with Dusty, the Dream Girls, and the pull-off. Can the turbine power overcome the piston engine machines? Well, get your money down. And who want to know more about NTPA pulling, why not subscribe to The Puller Magazine? It's the only national monthly covering the sport of truck and tractor pulling. The Puller is a fun, glossy magazine that includes everything you need to know, from tech talk to personalities to great action photos. For more information about how you can get The Puller and the benefits of becoming an NTPA member, call the NTPA at 614-436-1761. Dave Burns, what's going on with that device they call the sled? Well, Jim Lutke, his father Lloyd, and the rest of his crew are going to add about a net 800 pounds to the tractor. They're going to move the weight forward, and they're going to add some weight, making about a net 800 pound difference. They think that'll lessen it by about 14 feet. But what a cool job to have. Now, he's a businessman. He owns a small trucking company, does Jim Lutke. But for three months every summer, this is what he does. He has two sleds that he and his father take around to all the NTPA events, and they put them together, they, maintenance, they serve them, this is what they do. What a great thing to do if you're Jim Lutke. If you love pulling, why not have this job? That is Jimmy the Hammer Lutke right there. And apparently having a little problem with the sled, but he'll get it figured out. Now, this track is going to change a little bit as the sun is starting to go down. And you never really know, Dan, what it's going to be, if it's going to be better or worse. It just depends on the dirt and how deep the water is down in the soil. 
So you got, it's a good thing a lot of these guys are farmers and really understand what it's like working with the soil. Well, it's definitely an advantage working with the soil because uh, we had some rain come through here the other night that uh, really drenched the track pretty well. It, it was pretty consistent earlier, but as the, as the tractors go down, it, it chews it up a little bit, softens it up maybe. You know, they're going to have to make a lot of weight changes, a lot of gear changes. Well, Jimmy Lutke's goal right now is to stop these people in the track. No full poles, no 300-foot no efforts. This is uh, Mike Piper here getting ready to uh, do his pull-off run, his first pull-off run. He's got to keep it straight to win the pull-off. That is going to yeah. be the secret. It was the secret to getting into the pull-off. Yeah, now, you know, you said it, and, and Dante said it. I, I, I spoke about it earlier. It is that... that the, the problem, yeah, the pro You know, after a pull, coming back, there's little problems, little things that happen. And right now, you can see right down here, Piper's in a little bit of trouble, Dante. It looks like he's got a problem with his uh, fifth engine yeah. there. It's not, it's not kicking over. Yeah. You know, he might have to make this run on four engines. I'm not absolutely sure you can do that. Well, depends on how they're hooked and how they're geared and the clutches are on which motor. Yeah, I think you can disengage the clutch, though, and, and freewheel the, the fifth engine if necessary. It looks like that. I, I don't know. He might not be uh, doing it. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you what. This is a new machine. It just fired this week right here. And bottom line, you know, he's ready. this guy right here, come out new. You he's, don't know what you're going to get. He's going with four engines. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, man, got to fire in a hole. Fire in a hole. Yep. Looks like he Whoa. launched one of those motors, possibly. I'll tell you what, he made a run, though, with what he had. Yes, he did. I think I'll he did run on four engines. He yeah. did run on four engines that time. Yeah. And which uh, puts quite a strain on those other motors. That's uh, that's a lot of money sitting out there with a uh, lot, lot of, of strain on it. A lot of money. Here we go here. You can see there's nothing coming out of that, that top engine there in the back. It's uh, it's totally off. You can see those other four engines kicking out. He's got dropping a cylinder up here in the front left engine. Team sliding over here, too. Yeah. Moving he, out as he goes. But he still made a pretty good pull under the circumstances. Yes, he did. Good job, Pipe. Good job. He could be a candidate for your team be. there. Could be a candidate. American Dream Team. Two-hour special next Friday. Makes you wonder what he could have done. Yeah. Right? Yep. With all five of them. All right. Dave Burns, is that right? One motor didn't run at all? Let's ask him, Mike, what about it? Did you start with four, not five? And did you? why'd you decide to go, if so? Well, we had a little problem with the storyline back here. We broke some parts, and uh, that was a good pass, but I could have made a little better run. I think we got a lot of engine reworking to do where it looks. We was on fire there for a while, but I laid her in there as long as I could. And hey, if she goes to the ground, she just goes to the ground. And as Jesse said, guys, that is true. This is a breakout for this uh, particular machine. It's the first time he's run it, so he knew he was going to have some bug. And understand that every time that front end goes to ground, okay, they lose about 10 feet of the overall pull distance. So it's critical once it comes up, it stays up until the pull is over. Like Get the that pull away from my girl! Rejoin us. It's one of the most anticipated races of the year, the Pepsi 400. Imagine Daytona under the lights. Find out what it's going to take to conquer the world center of speed at night. Don't miss this special, the Pepsi 400 preview, next Friday night at 8 Eastern on TNN Motorsports. All right, two remain in the unlimited hey, pull off. Hey, what is this? Get my girl. There. Who's my girl? Dante. Uh, Look at this. Here. They're you get that here. ugly stuff out of that pit. Who is that? You're losing them. You're losing them. You're losing them. The that's guys. ugly that's and, and ugly. And that's time. ugly. Where's that? You should listen to me. You never listen to me. No, let's listen to the turbines of Gardner Stone. He's oh. got to go 297 feet. He current is leader current. is Mike Piper, 297 yep, Mike feet, Piper. feet on four engines. Yep, and I don't think he likes his chances of that holding up. Yeah, I don't yeah. like my chances of that guy standing over my girls either. Daddy got to talk to her. Oh! Here we go. Crank it up, brother. Come on. Get that front end up, Gardner. Hike her up. Here keep it up. 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 Oh, baby. He's got it, baby. He's got it. He's got it. Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. no. It's close. That is going to be it's so close. It's close. All Mike right. Piper right now biting his nails. They'll get a laser measurement from NTPA. As soon as we get that, we'll forward it on to you. 297 is where the bar 297, is. 297, that's uh, where Mike Piper ran. You know, going back to Piper, you know, he only had those four engines. He obviously had the motors kind of soft in the first run, and he leaned on them a little bit in the second run, but he couldn't get the car or the motor started on the final run. Here we got a good shot at Gardner Stone. Those big, powerful T55. 
jet engines if are you putting out some torque. If man. you couldn't get those surplus and just big parts barrels, it would cost you a million and a half dollars a piece. Can you imagine all out of old yeah. junk parts. And he's been running them for almost 10 years trouble free. Yeah, you're not going to go to your dealership and pick these up. Look at his shake <laughs> rail and roll right here. Right up there, Dante. Now, do they looks, have, looks good there. Do they have junk yards for, uh, for T-55 jet engines? Yep. Hey, Gardner Stone takes over the top spot on the pull off at 308.1. Great pull. Great pull. Jay Burns? Gardner, 308 and change. Good job. How wow. did it feel? It, uh, it felt all right. It popped a little off the line. It scared me right to death. But I hope it holds, but there's two good tractors behind me. It's anybody's ball game. Did you think about shutting it down at all? No, no. It, you got to go for it. <laughs> all right, Gardner Stone, the new leader, guys. Uh, no, no, he doesn't no, he shut him down. Yeah. But now it's Mr. Gardner Stone. The pressure is on because Dave Walsh is the next one up. Where my girl dead? This NASCAR Motor Sports in Tumble, Wisconsin, we're starting to get just a little bit of a shower, but so far we are soldiering on. And hey, you Motor Madness Derby fans, the next live demo derby event will come crashing your way from the famous Riverside Park Raceway in Agawam, Massachusetts. That's on Friday, September 18th. The first annual Back to School Bash. I know you kids don't want to hear about it, but it's not until September 18th. For information on tickets and entry forms, call the track directly at 800-370-7488. Just one man left, and that is Dave, Dave Walsh. Walsh. The yeah. Irish challenger has to pull, yeah. what, further than 307 feet? 308 feet. Gardner Stone, 308 feet. I'll tell you what, I think he can do it. There they go, taking a look at him right there. As these two on guys. edge now. He knows, he knows how that feels. Yeah. You know what? Making a full pull, guys, is like making a touchdown in football. That's really what it's all about. Or having four dream girls. With 100 yards to go. Dan wouldn't know what that is. Here we go. Here we go. Got a smooth, got up got top. Wheels up. Keep it straight, brother. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Oh, it's going to be tight. No. No, you don't know. I don't think so. Does not make a Gardner Stone yeah. is the champion on this evening in Toma, Wisconsin wow. with the unlimited class. So it was a night for the turbines. Yes, it was. A little One, unexpected. Well, yeah, not I need a turban on my head. The turbans have won the first, uh, been first and second at the only Grand National event so far this year. So maybe a little bit of a trend developing there. Gardner, you weren't too, Gardner, you weren't too sure you were going to hang on to the win there uh, when Dave got started. But uh, what, do you, what do you think went wrong there? Uh, Dave made a great run. He was, he had a lot of speed, but that sled is set real heavy at the other end. And uh, I thought he was going to zing it right out here, but then a boy, the sled caught him. Congratulations, you won the pull-up. Thank you. <laughs> Gardner Stone, he's won most every major event in the NTPA, guys. He pulls off another one here tonight. And Dave Walsh had to get on the brakes hard, and that just killed him. So Gardner Stone is the champion tonight at 308 miles an hour. All right, we'll be right back with the two-wheel truck. Stone in the okay. Synergen Cup Budweiser Dairyland Super Bowl winner's circle. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, they, that's a lucky man that goes up there, them two girls there, but I had to bring a couple in here with me because, you see what, you know, when you're out there in, in public and you're like, you're taking pictures and stuff with them ugly guys, I gotta, you know, I, ought to, I gotta bring you back up here just a little bit because Dante and Steve and me want a little bit of warmth around us, you know what I mean? My heart, you know, the engines was fluttering a while yeah, ago. Yeah. My heart fluttered. Your motor's when these two, <laughs> these two right here, I'm telling you, they, they, they my baby girl. Look at, would you stop touching my breath? Don't. You're ticklish. Don't ticklish in my breath. Don't do that no more. Make what do they say about tickling. turnabout? Nah, we don't, don't want to get into that. I don't know. I'm not yeah, going there. You're ticklish me, and I don't want to do that. All right, the sled being loaded and changed now for the two-wheel drive trucks. But first, let's go down to Dave Burns. All right, the sled, guys, is the thing that you have in pulling. If you've got pulling, you got to have something to pull. This sled is it. Let's take a closer look at it. This is the weight transfer box that holds about 25 or 26,000 pounds of the 60,000-pound weight. That's going to move around. But keep this in mind, too. Half of the sled is rolling, okay, and half of the sled is skidding on the ground without wheels, okay? Now, I'll show you what else the, as the box moves up on the sled, what it will do is it'll trip a series of switches that continue to transfer the weight toward the front of the sled, making it harder to pull. The last switch it'll trip drops the sled pan right onto the ground, making it almost impossible to pull down near the end. And the whole thing to keep in mind is that it's trying to get harder as it gets near the end because it does not want it, doesn't want to get the tractors moving off the end of the ramp. Now, those are the mechanics behind it. What about this guy, Jim Ludke? They call him the hammer. This is the guy that is the spirit behind the sled. Let's get to know him a little bit better. 
There you go. Now watch your step, ma'am. There you go. Oh, thank you, sir. That's very kind of you. Well, anytime, ma'am. Have a nice day. And thank you, and you too. Well, girls, you, you two girls look down today. How about if I give you each a lollipop? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, bye now. $20 bill. It's not my $20 bill. Sir, is this your $20 bill? No, sir. Boy, it's not my $20 bill. Here, you keep it anyway. It's not mine. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. In real life, Jim Lutke is a mild-mannered gentleman. But when he climbs aboard the sled, something happens that can only be described as a transformation. Jim becomes the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, Jim. Jim got a shot at that uh, dream team there. You know what I mean? Dante. One thing I got to say, Dave Burns and me had our run in early in the year, but I got. I tell you what, he's doing a great job. Don't you agree? I'm telling you, man, he is good. Yes, looks, he looks good too, brother. Let's go see what he's got for us, David. Where is he? Hey, the two-wheel drive class is coming up, guys, and it is something to get excited about. Let's start up here at the motor. Maximum 575 cubic inches, only two valves per cylinder allowed, and it has to be on an eight-cylinder block. These things will run great. Now, if you move to the back, the tires are another big consideration. They can only have a maximum of 143-inch diameter, actually circumference, on an 18-inch wheel at 28 pounds per square inch. But what do the fans like about these things? Forget all those numbers. They love the noise, and they love the wheelie. Look for these things to do great wheel stands in the two-wheel drive class. And it's amazing the kind of wheel stands they do, considering some of them have as much as 4,000 pounds on the front end. Yeah. With a the exhibition drag racing wheel stand, you put the motor in the back to see that to pop wheelies. This is exactly the opposite. Three competitors will advance to a pull-up exactly like we did in the Unlimited class. And this is Doug Theobald, a little Willie's truck out of Shelbyville, Indiana. Well, I like these things, Dante. I really do. This is a little uh, 54 Willys pickup with the uh, the Fontana or the old Arius motors. Yep. Uh, as they're known, 1471 high helix, little field blower on it. Wicked Willie. Wicked like Willie, great name. Great name. 1991 Pro National two-wheel drive truck champion. Now let's watch the hooking process here. They do it like a train, a, back up and get it hooked with a great amount of safety. The driver has yes, his hands do. in the air when it's hooked. That's the, for Ooh. lack of a better, it's a safety switch. Kill switch. Should, exactly. Right. Dead man switch is right. what most of them call it. But if the truck should get away from the slide, that kills the electric, kills the motor. Well, his average pull distance uh, last year was 289.9 feet out of eight, 13, eight out of 13 hooks. He's had two full pulls. He's one out of one this year. He's 14th uh, in the point standings right now. Well, he's had some good experience right now. We're going to see this little old yellow truck and get on down this road right here. Oh, man. Raining a little bit? Track wet? What does that do to it, guys? Uh, it's not right. Right now, it's, it's not, not good. good. Too much. Very nice. Good pull. Nice. Not bad. Very good. good. Very, very good for that particular truck. There's some maybe stronger trucks with more horsepower and more torque, but for the Wild Willie, that was just an excellent pull. And your question about the rain, Dusty, it's yeah. a little like a drag race. Yeah. It doesn't do anything good for it, and it gets so slick that you'd over-rev these engines and blow them to bits, put some blowers on the moon. But right now, so far, it isn't that wet. Hopefully, it'll stay that way. You see him get a little bit lazy here off the line. He doesn't get his momentum going. That sled is starting to catch up to him a little bit. He doesn't quite get the wheels up in the air and get his weight transferred quick enough. And at the end, he runs out of room here and just no more, no more power. Yeah, he was deep in the pit the whole way, brother. Yep. Yeah, it was a, it was a dog fight from the get go, but he'll do better. He'll yes, do better day. Yes, he will. He'll do better day. Well, he's not out of the pull off. Let's go down to Dave Burns. Well, Doug Theobald is the first two wheel drive driver to take to the track here. What do you think? Conditions? Uh, really not too bad. We had to compensate a little bit with the front end weight. 
probably maybe should have dropped the gear down, loaded the motor a little too, bit too much, but uh, we've been having some problems with the oiling system in our motor. Don't really want to take a chance on dropping and coming back tonight. You better go back and look at the computer and make sure everything's okay. All right, a safe run, guys, and like you said, not bad. No, not bad at all. No. All right, we got a whole bunch of two-wheel drive trucks still to come. Can they top that mark? You'll find out, we'll find out when we come back to Toma, Wisconsin. And you know, every NTPA truck and tractor pull is filled with great action, just like we're enjoying tonight. And there are over 200 NTPA sanctioned state and national level events to choose from this season. So there's sure to be one near you, and your whole family will enjoy it. Here's just a short list of a few of the great events. For a complete schedule, call the NTPA at 614-436-1761 or check out their website at www.ntpapull.com. All right, the two-wheel drive truck class continues. The rain has abated. Nothing coming down now, much to the relief of everybody. And what an interesting kind of hot rod truck this is. A 1914 Chevrolet H Roadster Roland Bar from Georgetown, Ohio. That little 23-key Roadster looked like that. It wasn't quite as long in the back, but it looked <laughs> yeah. kind of like that. Didn't have that kind of power either. No, not quite at all. All right, now our first puller. Uh, that was uh, Doug Theobald. He, he had the choice. Yeah. Yeah. And he decided to take his pull, and uh, he yeah. was 289 feet, I think. Yeah, so he's, he's going to take that pull. He stayed right there. I don't think he was comfortable with the setup. No. So I think he's going to see what happens now with the track conditions as they are in the rain, the in inclement rain that looks like it's coming in here. This is the 1914 Roadster right here. Anybody that really takes a hard look that was born in 1914, they can get a look. I think John was, but uh, was. he's the only one that recognized that. And I brought it to your attention. That's yep. a nice-looking piece. And this is called the Midnight Mistress. I bet there's a story there. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> no way. See the hook? Here's the hooking process again. Is that yeah. all that's on you? I mean, you, between the two of you guys. I mean, you know, him with his girls and you with your thoughts. I can't take this. Hey, speaking of girls, this this young man's you wife... You the angel of the hey, NFL, yeah. I remember. Hey, let me tell you something. You talk about backing his wife, Fonda. She backed him. I'll tell you what happened. In a little, when this thing is over, let me get some more stuff. Get a run, baby. Turned yeah. out better than I thought. I thought he was going to lose it about the 250 foot mark. Had yeah. a very hard start, but made up for it in the finish. Yeah, yeah. He just, I guess, he just made some power down here at the end and just drug it right through. You know, a point I really want to make here. Make it, make it to folks at home. The driver is a huge part of the success of one of these vehicles. Absolutely. You cannot just put the hammer no. down. You've got to squeeze into it, and you've got to feel that point where that sled wants you to put everything you've got That's to right. it. And it's just something you have to feel. There's no tack that can tell you that. There's no gauge that can tell you that. It's just only experience in the city of your pants. That's what makes this the best, I'm telling you. If you don't like this pulling, you need to go somewhere else. I guarantee it. Getting ready. Some dream team contenders out here tonight as we go for the big finals. Well, I like the phrase, Next hear, the power, hear the power and feel the noise. Let's go down to David. Well, and Roland Barr is getting just unstrapped here. And Roland, we were talking a little bit about the driver being very important here. How much driving did you have to do on that one? Not as much as I should have had. I had the front end a little heavy. I should have had to work harder at it. Uh, I think uh, front end a little bit lighter would have been a lot nicer run. But under the circumstances, uh, it didn't feel that awful bad. And, and you're just out here for fun anyway, right? Uh, yeah, we sure are. And uh, we are tickled to death to be on live TV. And we really appreciate everything you guys do for us. A sincere comment from a great puller, Roland Barr. Well, he sure is. That was a great, that was a great yeah. job. I like that. Absolutely. In fact, he now leads the class at 289.7 feet. We got a bunch more to go. The wheelies will continue. TNN Motors back. Fat live in Tulsa, Wisconsin. Now it's time for our Maalox moment. Maalox, for heartburn or acid indigestion, count on one minute Maalox. And who should have the Maalox moment so far this oh. evening in the early going? Look well, certainly that. not the Dream Girls and all the nice young men that are getting to steal Dusty's ladies. Here it is. Country girl. For Rodlin Knox, the defending champion, hoping to make at least the pull up, and suddenly that tractor hooked to the right, and that was Rodlin's Maalox moment. Maalox moment. Look at that. That was a shot. Whoa. But you know they're going to be back. They're champions last year, and they're, they're going to be in the running this year. That's oh, a great absolutely. team. That's a great team. Waiting to pull. Let's go to David Burns, Dave. Where's David? You Where's know, David? You know, Steve Evans, there's a lot of things you'd give up when you were having your 50th wedding anniversary to go to, but 
a tractor pull well only a certain brave and hardy few now Howard and Margaret Zastapol are giving up their 50th anniversary celebration today to come here but they haven't made it here yet we've got the family all here Oh, Elvis is in the building. They're on their way. They're running at this moment. But anyway, Carol is the daughter, and Jennifer is the granddaughter. And their grandparents are actually going to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary here and postpone the celebration until next Saturday, July 4th. Steve, I guess i got to ask the question. I don't know if you'd be that brave, but we'll ask Carol. Are your parents just normally just kind of zany and, you know, go-getters and things like that? My parents are the greatest. They like to party. They like to have a good time. They're real involved with tractor pull. They've been involved with it from the very first pull. And here they are. Oh, oh yeah. They made it. And uh, we, up there. we wish you a very happy 50th anniversary. Is this a great place to spend it? It sure is. The best. Howie, what about it? Do you love it here at the Toma Tractor Pull? Ben Tendon Bar here at the, with the Lions. We love it. <laughs> He's what? Every year. All right, guys. Beer, tractor pulls, Wisconsin. This is the place to be. Dream Team contenders, maybe, right there. Those are, I those like are that. the captains of your team. Those are oh, fans now, man, buddy. Man, I'm telling Imagine, you. Imagine, 50 years. I went 50 months. <laughs> 50 minutes without what? That was before Sandy in yeah. 20 wonderful there, years. There you go. There's David Lamar, David Lamar from Holland, Michigan. You know, Dave Lamar has a whole lot of experience in the dirt track Cadillac. 1930 Chevrolet. In fact, you know, Dave is kind of a throwback to the early days of racing. He still runs the old metal, an iron Chevy block. Yep. In fact, everything about his pulling operation is right out of the 50s. Uh, like Dante said, 1930. Dave Lamar is a true hot rodder at heart. Once he fires up his 37 pickup, he's instantly transformed back in time destined to cruise the boulevard in search of the ultimate cheeseburger and heroes from his past. Hi, welcome Hi. to Rock and Robin. What can I get for you? I've heard your cheeseburgers are good. Oh, they're great. You want one? Sure. Okay. Uh, you want a cheeseburger? Yeah, he'll have a cheeseburger. He does? Yeah. Okay. I'll be right back with that for you, too. Uh, okay, thank you. Hey, those cheeseburgers don't taste all right. Yes, they are. You know, Elvis, I was thinking, what do we got to do about Toma? Well, Dave, it's like I told you. Toma's just like Vegas. If you're going to be a star, you have to lay it all out on the table. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, Dave, that's my line. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you very much. But Dave Lamar right now just waiting for a signal to hook up to the sled with this cast iron 572 cubic inch Chevy engine. You know, he's had a, a problem being underpowered compared to the rest of the competition, but uh, he kind of says you have to be more accurate with balance and, and driving to put the power to the ground, just like hunting. He says you can kill a bear with a 300 Weatherby Magnum, but you can also do the job with a 30 out 6. You just have to be more accurate. So I like his style. Me too. Marcia, his wife, started up the motor and disappeared to root for her man. That's a good-looking rig, isn't it? He's got to go better than 289 feet. You know, I have... Yeah, I, I guarantee it. There he is. Yeah, that, that, the that, hammer boy. that man is really closing in on a dream team. Maybe right there. There's a hammer right there. Get ready to lay it down. He to, hey, Steve, excuse me. You talked about his wife a while ago. I'm going to lay this on you. I say, what do you do to relax from this mess? She say, I'm just taking up horseback ride. So, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. So she has her hobby. Yeah. All right, here comes the hook. At the end of the year, the NTPA has an annual award called the Hooker of the Year for the competitor in any class that has made the most uh, pulls down their courses at national or state levels. I love this little hot rod. Good looking, isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful. It, it's about middle of the road as far as the competition is concerned, yeah. if you were to rate it. Go, go. And you could really hear when he laid into yep. it, man. Yeah. He pedaled it out. He waited, he waited, he waited, and then just nailed that big Chevy. He had that old iron block humming that time. That sounded good, didn't Whoa. it? Nice and crisp. Yep. The blower's spinning. Got it up on top right here in the middle, too, and brought it home. Real nice pull, guys. That's a great pull. Here we go again in the replay. See how he easily starts it out, gets the sled going. 
See those butterflies that are kind of a quarter of the way open there, and then all of a sudden, about quarter track, he nails it. Right now, it, I think he's in second place. Yep, that'll put him in second place. Yeah, great. Behind Roland Barr. That's a pretty straight pull. I mean, he's, he's drifting a little bit to the right there again. And that's a driver that is riding those brakes with his left and his right foot, man. When he can't steer with the wheel, you do it with your tootsies, Dave Burns. All right, and Dave, we were looking at that as a pretty close to perfect run. Is is that the way you'd characterize it? I had to grab a little break and wanted to suck me to the right-hand side. And that hurt me, probably took a couple foot off the end. You know, Dave, we've already had sort of a discussion about Elvis here uh, in the facility here tonight. So uh, was that his fault or was it his help that kept you on line? <laughs> well, the track was trying to get everybody that way earlier. So I think Elvis kept me this way. <laughs> and that way is in the stands, folks. And uh, Elvis keeping him on track. Dave Lamar, a pretty good pull. So he misses by only a foot of taking over the lead from Roland Martin. Now watch. Watch the hammer. Look at him. Look at him. He loves He's it. He's using that belly a little bit to help stop that he sled. He loves it. Look at him. He absolutely loves it. Yeah. Oh, baby, he was hot. Shannon Leister, a young man, just 17, will be up next in the two-wheel drive class. Stay with us, folks. It's a lot of fun here in Toma. Were you born without a soul? Excuse me? You don't know how to love, do you? What are you talking about? I'm talking about this. It's just an oil filter. Just an oil filter? Look. Nothing stops more dirt than America's number one brand of oil filter, Fran. Now get out of here. <laughs> How do you live with yourself? Fram oil filters. Pay a little more now or pay a lot later. Hey, you home? Yeah, traffic was light. I was worried. Oh, so so. I hear you. Yeah. So, what's for dinner? Uh, meatloaf. Meatloaf? Like in the oven? Yeah. Come on, you should be outside with me, barbecuing up something tasty. I know, but you know, I don't have the time. Listen, all I need is 10 minutes. Just give me 10 minutes and we're cooking, baby. Okay, you're on. New Kingsford Matchlight is ready in about 10 minutes, so you can barbecue fast. So, you mind if I smoke? <laughs> <laughs> Next week, it's a special Motor Madness presentation. Tune in at 9 o'clock Eastern as Dusty Rhodes announces the final roster for his American Dream Team. You've met the contenders in arena trucks, monster trucks, demo derbies, tractor pull, and swamp buggies. Now meet the drivers who are worthy enough to be a part of Dusty's American Dream Team. Catch all the madness right here on Motor Madness next week. Don't miss it. Oh. And Gardner Stone wouldn't miss an opportunity to get into the Synergen Winner Circle to receive his trophy from Mike Dyson, President of Synergen, here at the Budweiser Dairyland Super Bowl. Wow. I tell you what, too. Taking a look at that, Dream Team girls, surely a contender for the Dream Team when you step up and you get the gold or the trophy or the money when you leave here. That's what it's all about. Big win for Gardner Stone. Yep, and enjoying the milk. That is most appropriate here in Dairyland. Absolutely. <laughs> what else would it be? <laughs> Weather starting to look a little more promising. Well, Seems to be moving off to the east. Some blue sky, uh, still hot and a little bit humid here in Toma, but uh, that should, he didn't keep the crowd down, did it? Bunch of people. Great crowd. Absolutely good. Well, crowd. gang, you know, I, I think, hopefully, maybe we don't need this yeah, tent we anymore. we don't need this. Huh? You want to take this baby down or Dig not? Dig it down. No, I, I'm looking over there. I'd like to leave it up. <laughs> if you don't mind. It's coming in. It? <laughs> you two fight it out. You two fight here. it out. We got another two-wheel drive truck getting ready back in the wings. What you're hearing yeah. in the background is there's yeah. a second track here, and the crowd, as we're waiting for our trucks, is uh, not just sitting here idly. They've got other classes, particularly the big diesel tractors that hey, they like a whole lot. You know what, Steve? You know why Dante likes this? Because he's used to playing in the Astrodome. That's, right. That's why he wants it on top. Dave Burns, what are you playing in, boy? Well, down here in the mud with the Dirt Slinger and the Dirt Slinger's father, this would be Bill Leishner. He's getting ready to watch his son Shannon take off. And when you talk to Bill before the 98 season, a lot of what you hear wasn't what Bill was planning on, but the excitement that he had for Shannon running this year. How proud are you of how he's done after just a few events so far? Oh, real proud. He's, he's won a pole, a couple of them. The first time he ever got in a seat, he won, and it kind of spoiled him, but he does real well. Real proud of him. So what are you going to tell him the first time he loses bad? <laughs> yeah, try harder. It's tough competition. 
there's nothing to be ashamed of last place among this bunch. Now, Bill, how far do you want to see Shannon go? Now, you've obviously gone to the unlimited class. He's in the two-wheel drive. Where do you want to see him end up? I'd like to see him take the lead by five or six feet. Okay, and what about after uh, this year? Do you want to see him move on to other classes and just stay in pulling? Oh, he's driving the mod some, and we're going to see what happens with rules and turbines and motors and just try to get up there and hunt the unlimited somehow. Guys, I, I guess size matters. <laughs> you know, I said that Shannon was 17. I'm wrong. He's 24. There is a 17-year-old lad still to come, and this is the Willie's Dirt Slinger out of Weldon, Illinois. That's a good-looking little piece. Yeah, very real beautiful machine right here this young man got to be excited about so many people here the place is packed beautiful night here in wisconsin you know a couple of times in these graphics you've seen that 1471 high helix blower right that is the most potent roots type supercharger in the world in fact so potent that a number of the nhra classes have yeah. not been allowed to run it the top wow. of the of because would go too fast right. way too much power with a high helix blower. a lot of a lot of power with the helix floor he's currently second in the point standing right now you know i love about this class is you can express yourself you want to have a willies you want to have a model t you want a late model chevy ford dodge doesn't matter i like the eyes in the front of that jeep it kind of reminds me of our producer's eyes when every night <laughs> Directors, too. Yeah, the directors, too. I love the guys in the truck, personally. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Suck up. I'm spending their money foolishly. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Going to get a hookup right here now. Boy, I, you know, anticipating something like this, adrenaline got to be flowing in this young man's body and his heart, getting everything right, making sure you stay down the middle, getting the right pull, getting on top. Big time going on right here. I tell you, this is, this is tremendous. Tremendous pulling here. I think he's going to go the distance. Move run. Great pull. Yeah. Great pull. Yeah, and he, he did. He gave it a little more power early yep. on than some of the other guys. Maybe that was the right thing to do. I'll tell you what, though, he might be right up on that. He might have. He might have took over the lead here, Dante. You know what I'm talking he about? Have. He's definitely. He close. might have pulled that thing right. He's got to, to be 289.7 yep. feet. That's oh, I it. believe he's close to 300. Maybe not, but uh, whoa. Well, you're Two, right, Dusty. 292.9. Man, Rusty. that was a nice pull. That's a real good pull. Janet, go on. with it. Here he goes. He's starting off real easy. Gets that sled motor. Gets it up in the tire. Keeps it nice, good, positive angle. Look at the tires bounce there. And look how they wrinkle up. That's like exactly what they should do. Yeah. Exactly, Dan. Yeah. Like your old top fuel tires. They've got to wrinkle in. like that. Absolutely. He's digging in. Got some good traffic. Oh, the looks of those eyes. Front wheels up. Nice straight run. Good, good run. Nice job. That's, That's a young man with a future. That's a young man with a little future in this sport. Uh -huh. Another shot of the sled. Mr. Lucky, I guess, uh, I wonder, if, too bad we didn't have a shot on, on Jimmy the Hammer that time. I bet he was disappointed. I bet he's crying. Want to bet? <laughs> Balling like a baby. If he ate the five, he's got tears all over his sled. Tears of joy. Tears of joy. Well, you were talking about the Hammer. There he is. He's crying. I see a tear. I see a tear. He's wearing those yellow glasses. Is it telling you it's a tear of joy? Job well done, Hammer. Okay, Mr. Burns. Shannon Leishner takes the lead with a 292 plus. How do you feel about that? It looked good from our standpoint. Oh, I felt real good about that pull. It was really good. How about the driving of it? I mean, was it pretty stable or did you have to kind of fight it? Oh, it was pretty good. I got down about 200 foot and I had to correct it just a little bit. To go to, it was going a little bit to the right and I had to get on a little bit to correct it. But oh no, I thought that was a pretty good pass. It felt good. So are you a quick learner or is this going to take a while to uh, actually start winning it full time in this? Oh, on this vehicle is kind of different. I'm used to the tea bucket. This I can't feel this hook near as good as our other truck, but it's coming on. I'd like to say hi to my grandmother who's fighting cancer at home. All right, Grandma, hello. Father Bill helping out here, and Shannon, the new leader in the two-wheel drive. He sure is. In this racetrack, it is changing a bit as some of the water is starting to come up and to the surface, which is making for, a, well, a little kind of a better biting racetrack, but it's really going to take some power to top Shannon's 292.9 foot effort here in the two-wheel drive trucks. We've got a lot of great guys still to come. Hope you're having as much fun here at Thomas. We are. Be right back.
Good morning, America. How are you? America's favorite overnight relief announces new x lax with Senna, a natural active ingredient. Good morning, America. Still works overnight, and four out of five users agree it's gentle. New x lax so dependable, it's guaranteed. Sure. Why does that disappoint you, Jimmy? Well, I always like to see a couple get out 300 feet. That's exciting for the people and exciting for the crowd, and that's my job. <laughs> now, do you have a $20 bill, Jimmy, that uh, you'll <laughs> sign and uh, give to me, perhaps, tonight? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying Thanks. no, guys, with sort of a knowing laugh. You going to clue me in on this? Thank you very much. Yeah, well, I, he likes to give money away that he finds on the street. Unfortunately, he doesn't find a lot of it. <laughs> So there's a much opportunity to do this, but we have found Stan Shelton of Ambermoral, North Carolina, in a beautiful truck called the Sawmill Express, and this is one of those big 567. For used to run, Dante won a national event in HRA with a Keith Black Emmy. Yes, I did. Those are good engines, good power plants. You betcha. He's uh, been the United Pullers of Carolina two-wheel drive champion '97. He's uh, big in North Carolina. Let's see what he can do over here in Wisconsin. Been pulling for about eight years, and I really like the look of his equipment. Everything that can be anodized yeah. is, or chromed, or powder coated. The helmet. I mean, just a good looking operation. A lot of these guys take real good care of their equipment. There's yep. no question about that. Ford truck, Chrysler Hemi powered. It's a good looking vehicle, isn't it? Look at that. Now, speaking of Chrysler, it was nice to see the Chrysler Corporation uh, involved with the Rodel and Knox. Yes. Machine, great. Uh, is part of Team Mopar now. Yeah. Luke Patane covering yet another base. They're gr they're great people, oh, and I, as you know, I had them uh, when I was racing Top Fuel, and, and they're great great company to be involved with. All right, Jimmy the Hammer Lucky is waiting for Stan Shelton with an evil look on his mustache. Face. He's licking his chops. Yeah, he didn't like what happened uh, yeah, he with Shannon. Didn't he like that a bit. He wants. Yeah, he might get it he again right here. Us. But he cannot change that sled, understand? No. no. Once the class has started. Yeah, but he can move his weight around <laughs> and add to it just a little bit. <laughs> a little yeah, body English. Yeah. There's an interested fan. Who's that? I think that's his wife, Amy. Is that his wife? Get it up on top. Might be 290 there. I'll tell you, pretty close. He came up here to show the, the boys in, in Wisconsin what the boys from North Carolina can do. I right. did. That is really an excellent pull for Shannon or Stan Shelton in the Sawmill Express based on his uh, past history and results. That is really a great effort for the Ford truck. I love the sound of that engine. Tell us about it. He can't beat a Hemi. Look at this. He's dropping a little cylinder there, but he cleans up for him. Now he gets the load on there and Cleans up real good, gets the tires up in the air. Good straight pull going here. Good traction. Oh, look at that tire spin. He's running a little bit more air pressure here. It's not buckling up as much. No, about seven pounds. So that's where the hammer got him. 293.6. Whoa. And we got a new go. leader. There you go. Boy from North Carolina. There he is. Let's go down to Dave Burns. He's got to be one happy young man, Dave. He came a long way. Oh, and last year, remember, Steve, he broke after he came all the way from North Carolina. Stan, a little better outcome this time. How does the 293.6 feel? It feels real good. Against this competition, it's really hard to make a good pass. We're real tickled with the pass. Uh, we just hope we can stay in that top three so we can come back for the pull-off. We all thank our sponsor, Coke Lumber Company. Without their financial support, we wouldn't be able to be here. What do you think about sticking with it? Do you think you can hold at that time, at that uh, length? It's going to be really tough. You've got three trucks right there are tremendously tough. And it looks like we're kind of building a road there, it really looks like. So uh, if we can hang on to that third spot and come out for the pull-off, we'll be really tickled to death. And in fact, Jimmy Lutke said the same thing about the track, guys. It's getting better because now the two-wheel drives, which are lighter, are actually packing it down, making it better. Well, he's not a shoe-in for the pull-off because we have three great trucks remaining, including Roger Simon there of Dyersville, Alabama. And there they are. Have the These girls, you'll have to come back for those. Hey, darling. Tremendous crowd on hand for the 23rd annual Dairyland Super Pool. Steve Evans with Dan Pastor, Andy Dusty Rhodes, and Dave Burns having a wonderful time. And up next, there's only three left in this class before the pull-off. This is Roger Simon out of Dyersville, Iowa, and that is the Dodge Dakota called Simon Says. Simon Says, and he's kind of one of the top dogs in the in the heat here. He's 
He's a strong runner. He's Grand National two-wheel drive champion in 93 and 97. And you know, like every major motorsport, the demands of competition life on the road, competitive life on the road, force these drivers to operate out of a state-of-the-art trailer that serve as a combination garage, office, and home away from home. Now, earlier, Roger Simon let us take a look, good look inside his trailer to see just how tough his life on the road really is. I mean, miserable. Now, this is our pulling trailer. Uh, we carry our three pulling trucks in here. We carry our sport vehicle. We've got a shop inside. Uh, we just got to get by what we got because it's pretty crowded. Uh, we live in it for 30 weeks out of the year. So you can see really how crowded it is. Look inside. Oh, Pastor, well, it's not much, but it's our home away from home. It looks like your old rig. Yeah, right. <laughs> outside. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, that's one of the better trailers I've ever seen. Without a doubt, it is. Man, uh, you know this? Trailer. I'd never come out. You know the guys who tell me that this may be what they call a draw track. The later the bill you draw, the better you may run because the track is improving. Roger says that uh, he's, he's quoted as saying, if I beat Dan Walsh, I'll win the championship. He will be our major obstacle this year. Dan Walsh, the Walsh family people have a lot of They're hard to beat. around here, yeah. don't they? They sure do. They're yeah. hard to beat. You're talking about the track as it wears on. Yep. Reminds me, you know, relaying back to an old pair of boots when you buy them new. Sometimes they're hard to walk around right. in. That's but then right. when you get them broke in, they, they fit like a glove. I think maybe that might, for the layman out there, be what this track is doing right here. Like an old pair of boots. Feeling good on your feet. Look at this. He has moved the sled to the left boundary line. The first who to do that. Who has? Simon says. He sure has. Well, you know, there's been a lot of car a lot of trucks that have moved real hard to the right at the end of the run, so maybe he knows something better than everybody else. It is so important to watch the competition in front of you and see where they hook and how they do and uh, what kind of grooves they uh, put into the racetrack. And if you're back working on your track, you send somebody if you trust to do just that. And he's moved over completely one full width. Yep. One full width. One full width. You understand that? Moved over to the right. Like, well, maybe there you go. Width. Here you go. Is that Hemi, that 572 in here? Look at Ludke. He's yeah. out. Oh, wait. He's kind of cheering for the guy. And Simon says yeah. we may have a new leader. Simon well, says 300 feet, maybe. The whip he moved over might have made the difference. Dante, that's a good call. Simon says go for it, right? And he wow. went for he it. Certainly did I tell you how he went for it. When we see the replay, try to note how early he got after it, man. He, gave yeah. it, he rolled out about 10 feet and nailed, nailed it. it. Here he goes. As you said, he's kind of starting off real easy. Not much tire spin. He's got it moving. Got good momentum going. Yeah. Now right he, he gets it. on it. He got him a full pull out of that, too. Full pull. Touchdown. 302.3 feet. Wow. Best pull of the night. That's a good one. Those Hemis can make some power, boys. I'm telling you. They're tough to beat. Let's see Mr. Lucky here. Is he going to be disappointed, or is he going to kind of cheer? Ah, he kind of cheered the guy on. Uh, that's a good sportsmanship. Hey, David, what do you got down there for us? Yeah. Well, a happy Roger Simon. I would think, Roger, after a full pull 302, way to go. Yeah, it was a good pull, and uh, I think I can come in a pull off and do a little bit better. And uh, the truck really ran good first pass on this new blower. We changed some fuel systems Steve did today. He's our mechanic, and, and our, so I think uh, it's going to be a good pull. Starting on the right, a good call then, eh? Yeah, that's a good call. We moved it a couple foot over from the last guy, and I think that helped a little bit. All right, Roger Simon, he kept the front end down, guys, and his foot in the pedal. A great run. And has an edge of nine feet over the other two drivers going into the pull-off. Stay with us. When we come back, you'll see Jesse Pichot, just 17 years old. We saw his dad in the Unlimited. Great news for all you demo derby dreamers. The 81 Speedway hosted this year's Intergalactic Crunch-Off 2 has announced a special two-day Labor Day Derby. 
officially known as the Last Chance Crunch. Now, we know this will be a huge event, so call them directly at 316-755-1781 to get your entry in early. And get this, it will be an open event with no limit to the number of entries. Two separate derbies on two days, and the lucky winners of the Last Chance Crunch will be invited to participate in TNN's live intergalactic crunch-off, too. This may be your last chance to qualify for the crunch-off, too. So call them up now, make your reservation, and good luck. Okay, Dave Burns, before we see our next two-wheel drive puller. Steve, one of the things that we love about motorsports, I know you do, is that it's a family affair. Jesse Petro getting ready to run, and his dad, Randy, standing by the coach, probably the mechanic. Uh, how, much, how much do you make Jesse work on his own uh, truck here? Uh, he, works, he works quite a bit on it there. He's, uh, he helps do a lot of the wrenching on everything, but uh, I do most of the fine-tuning when it comes right down to it. Uh, we just been tuning on this new truck here, so we'll, we'll hope it runs real good tonight. Randy, what's the most natural thing that Jesse's doing right out of the box at age 17? Well, I think he's, been, he's grown up around this sport, and uh, I think he's watched Dad run a lot, so I think he's, he's doing real good. I mean, uh, the last two weekends we've been a couple of polls, and he's won both of them, and uh, he's, he's doing a real good job of driving. I'd say he's learning a lot. Does he, is it that watching that's helped him the most, keeping his eye on you all these years, you think? Yeah, I think just being around the sport so much, you know. Uh, he's having a little problem with the gears and stuff a little bit, but uh, I think he'll, he'll be all right. All right, Jesse Petro getting ready to run and learning a ton, obviously, from Dad. He is indeed. He'll be a senior when he goes back to school in uh, the fall. Key Bucket Ford Roadster. Man, we've seen every kind of combination you can imagine in the body world. Another one of those big Fontana motors. And if he's won the last two events, he's got to be a favorite, this I would is, say, to make the pull This is only his fourth time driving. You're kidding. Tonight. No. Really? The, kid, the kid's a natural. Yeah. Let's go back down to Dave Burns. Busy boy, Dave. Yeah, well, you is. know, Jesse is getting ready to run, guys, but uh, someone he's going to have to pass on his way by is competition director Larry Richwine. Now, Larry is normally pretty tough on Jesse as a technical inspector and that kind of thing, but Jesse's dating his daughter, Kim. How tough are you on Jesse as the father of Kim? Uh, on the track, it's the same as everybody else, but, you know, when he calls some nights, I'm pretty tough, I think. I'm pretty tough. Now, wait a minute. You grew up around him, or he grew up around you in this sport. Uh, Jesse, a pretty good kid? He's a real good kid. He's a tough competitor, and he's won, like, two of his first three hooks, so I hope he does well tonight. Now, one of the bad things, though, is that uh, your daughter, Kim, is such a stylist that uh, <laughs> the high schools are in two totally different cities, and you had to buy two prom dresses, didn't you? Yeah, I bought two prom dresses for a prom one Friday night, one Saturday night, and it was 240 miles away. He gets away with one tux. I buy two dresses and probably shoes. That's right. Jesse, the racer, the economist, he only had to rent one tux, guys. <laughs> I bet you Jesse can spell curfew. Here we go. Let's spin that big old blower. Prime it with a little gasoline. It's Prime it and alcohol start it up. In the and tank. those injectors. Yep. Kicker. Get the mouse going. Jesse's got his dad, his girl. He's got his girl's daddy here. So he better, you know, he better stay right. And yeah, you know what? He looks pretty relaxed. For, yeah, he does. You know, get with all the. The fanfare going on and all the pressure on him. Well, He's national TV, a huge yeah. crowd. Yeah. His family, Fourth his, time friends, his girlfriend. Fourth time in the box, you his know. Girlfriend, Teddy. Who's mad about having to buy two prom dresses? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Going to back in and hook it up. Good He's got to pull the beat, though, I guarantee you. Oh, man. Wow. But, you know, all he has to do, really, is go chew better than 292.9 to get into the pull-off. Yep. Correct? Uh, yeah. Yes. yes, well, yeah. 292.9, yeah. right. And Shannon's on the bump there. Shannon. Yeah, we know Roger, right. though. I mean, 302 is oh, oh. a big time pull for him. He's going to line up, I believe, in the same tracks that Roger Simon laid down. That's true. You know, and, and our friend Lutke, the yeah. hammer, he doesn't care how old or young you are. Nah. He's going to try to hurt you. Oh, he'd try to stop his grandma at half oh, I guarantee you. That nice guy stuff in that tape. Come on, give me a break. He, was, he got a publicist now. He got a publicist this year. You know that? You made him famous. I want some royalties. I think you should. <laughs> and there's Kim there's looking on, his 16-year-old girl. girlfriend, daughter of NTTV's competition director. Nice shot, guys. There you go. That's what it's all about right here. I'm telling you, families, Eat. kids off the street doing something constructive, enjoying life. That's what America's all about right here as we head towards the 4th of July. I Run. guarantee you. There you go. Running right on the track. Hook it Roger up. Roger Simon laid down 302 exactly. feet. Exactly. Man, he looks cool, guys. I'm telling you. This kid might be right. Oh, man. 
the blower. Oh. He might have made the he pull up and it sneezed the blower. Oh, man. He'd have made it. And Kim's running down there to make sure he's okay. Of course. When it comes to the blower restraint straps and all the good things, uh, the NTP is pretty uh, strict wow. on this. As Kim goes down there to stand by isn't, her isn't, man. Isn't young love just wonderful? Isn't it just I don't wonderful? know. I forgot. Look at, here. You Look at here. I remember when I had a girlfriend like that once. <laughs> <laughs> that was six years ago. Wasn't it? When I was 16. No. I tell you, he, Got one now. he he had a shot at making the pull up. Yeah, not take a, a, b b busting uh, Roger Simon. Yeah, take here. a look here when he when he got off the mark and looked pretty smooth right here, guys. Yeah. He was strong. He's, yeah, he's got a weight, good weight transfer. Yeah, he was hooked big time. Good bite right there. But it pretty he, straight run. Maybe leaned out a little bit, Dan, and just sneezed yeah, that blow. Yeah, it's got a little bit too bright down there. There's oh, some flames coming watch out. Watch your hammer here now. The hammer's head might hit the dashboard. Yeah, he loved to come forward. <laughs> sled when that <laughs> He's going to come wow, right out of your TV. Yeah. Gonna come right in your TV. Right set. Watch it. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Oh. Oh. Let's go down to David Burns and see what he's got for us. David? All right. Well, Jesse and Kim are standing by here, and Jesse's mom, Kathy, is driving, uh, driving the truck away. So, uh, Jesse, tell us about it. Did you have any warning at all that it was going to go? No, it was making a, a nice straight pass, and then all of a sudden it just popped. So I don't know if it it probably went lean. We was leaning on it pretty hard to try to make a good pass, but oh well, that happened. It kind of angled from left to right. Was that the plan to begin with? Yeah, we had seen some of the guys at the beginning of the class was going left, and then some of the guys towards the end of the class was going right. So we kind of made it so it'd go in the middle. All right, Kim. Now, when he doesn't make it like this, is he in big trouble with you? No, I'm just glad to see him go down the track. I'm here to watch him and enjoy what he does. How good looking was his tux? <laughs> it was a nice look. How good looking were her dresses? <laughs> Very nice. She looked wonderful. <laughs> All right. Hey, I guess it must have been a great prom, guys. Proms, excuse me, plural. Couple of great little America kids. Yes, huh? sir, Don't you buddy. love it? Yes, That's what it's buddy. all about, just like it said. We've only got one more two-wheel drive truck that can bust into the pull-off, and that is Dan Walsh, the pretty green machine. We'll see him when we come back. Oh, there my darling. Look at him. Anytime you get an opportunity to rub shoulders with him, look at these guys back there. They in here, the um, Green girls headed for that big special coming up next Friday night. Green team final. That's that's, That's going to be a big deal. Isn't big it? deal. Two hours going to be tough. Right here. Am I still coming? You? Yeah. Did I get to go? You know, a couple weeks ago, you said I could go. As far as I'm concerned, you can go with me. Oh, okay, good. All right, you see the blower belt turning in the safety guard on the motor of Dan Walsh. The Irish Challenger 96 Ford F-150 truck, a big area's motor. The guy has done a lot of winning, including 97 right here at Toma. And he's currently number one in points right now. And he's moving over even further yep. on the pulling surface. I talked to him before tonight's festivities started, and I tell you, I really like this guy. Love this truck right here. Got a good shot. Going to get it done. Let's Burn. check. David, what you got? All right, the Walsh clan, they are down here, and they are getting ready to go here. They're cheering for both Dave and Dan. Now, let's go to hear it, folks. Dan's getting ready to go. Dan's getting ready to go here. Is Dan the better driver? Let's ask his dad. Is Dan the better driver of the two? Is Dan the better driver? Well, it's a tie. It's tied between Dave and Dan. It's a tie. Yeah, that's what a father would say, I think. What do you think? Is Dan the better driver or Dave? Yeah, yeah. Dan's wife, Lisa, and Dave's wife, Mary. You know, they all think that uh, their, their guy's the better driver. And Mary's right down here with all the kids. So, I don't know, guys. Maybe the more in the flock, the better the driver. I don't know, but he's got it for the 300 foot full pull. Just a little bit short. He got kind of a slow start, a good middle, and the hammer got him. We're gonna yeah, tell you. Good, good straight run though, but it just seemed to be a little bit down on power. Got the slow start, like he said, and he just couldn't quite get the momentum going out there. What a beautiful shade of green. I still think he might have gotten in, into the uh, pull-off here, though. Let's take another look at it. Uh, he might be in the 280. Wheels are still down. 289.1, yeah. guys. 289.1. Yeah. No, that's not going to cut it. No. That won't get him in the pull-off, huh? No. Our pull-off is nope. going to be Roger Simon, Stan Shelton, yeah. and uh, Shannon, Shannon Leishner. 
Well, the butterflies are wide open on that Enderly injector, but unfortunately, it never really got completely hooked, and the hammer almost went to sleep. He knew he had this one fried. Yep, he's got him right there. Wake up, hammer. Yeah. Yeah, he's bucking the old horse there. Well, that's going to give the rest of the field a chance to catch up on uh, Dave Walsh for the points here, or Dan Walsh for the points. So, you know, you can't win them all, as they say. Watch this. Uh, he looks like he's yeah. a little blow a ring there, huh? Boba. Dave Burns. Well, Dan Walsh is standing by, guys. And Dan, your wife, Lisa, said you were the better driver, but your dad said it was a tie between you and Dave. How did you feel about that run? Well, it was good. I came out of the hole just a little bit late. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing a pull-off. If we are, what I got to do is I got to take some fuel away from the motor and come out harder. Okay, he's going to regroup, guys, and come back. Well, well, he's not going to have to worry about coming not back, tonight. <laughs> unfortunately. Maybe. Well, there is two more days of this pool, yeah. by the way. If you're in the central Wisconsin area, you got to get over here and check it out. There's a hammer. He's going to work on that sled because the pull-off is coming up in the two-wheel drive class. He's going to stop them in their tracks. It's the power of NTPA pulling on the Internet. Log on to the NTPA website, ntpapull.com. There you'll find event results, point standings, upcoming event schedules, profiles of your favorite pullers, and much, much more. So check it out, ntpapull.com. Let's check in with Dave Burns. Steve, Dan, Dusty, I know you want to know what Jimmy Lutke changed for the pull-off here. I mean, he must have done something to try to stop these guys. Jimmy, what did you change? I didn't really change anything because uh, I had about 10 foot of track left on most of the trucks, and uh, the doctor was out the end a couple of feet, and I got the 310 and the floating finish to work in, so... I feel pretty confident I can handle it. Now, if they worked on their trucks, you think you can still get them? Oh, yeah. I, I think they wouldn't, didn't have that much left tonight. Not a problem, guys. Not a problem. Kind of like Dusty Rhodes. i tell you what. The, the, these two guys that we just were talking to, my man Dave Burns kind of remind me of Burns and Allen. <laughs> I mean, they got a lot of stick going here tonight. Speaking of stick right up here, it's what it's all about. The American Dream Team girls, we are talking about next... Friday night, we will have the finals for the Dream Team. Contenders are here tonight. And one thing that I've noticed as you girls have moved through the audience, right around yes or no, yeah and nay, is everybody here loves being out in the open and watching a full pull. The <laughs> girls are learning about full pulls tonight. Y'all need to stay away from some of them ugly guys, though. You know what I mean? Doss, I'm telling you. Stancy, Crystal, with Kim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my girls. Dream team contenders everywhere. Steve Burns, what do you think? Burns and Allen. Hey, Steve. Dave, take it, buddy. Dave. Burns, I, I'm looking for Allen, but I'm not seeing him down here. Hey, we're getting ready for the pull-off, <laughs> and Shannon Leisner is getting ready now. Had a little time to work on the truck. Did you change anything? Didn't change a thing. Now, Jimmy didn't change anything on the sled either, so how's that going to work? Big baby. Hope we go straight and don't have to correct it with a brake this time. All right, Mr. Shelton, what about you? Nothing changed on the sled. Did you fix the truck to do anything different? Nothing changed. We are going to change our hole approach a little bit. We had a little too much blowback coming out of the hole, so we took a little bit of fuel away from it. We're hoping to help us. All right, and Roger Simon, driver of the Simon Says, Simon Says, I hope you win tonight, but what did you change on your truck? I never changed nothing. I thought I laid a perfect rundown. If I can repeat it, I think it might be good enough. All right, Roger Simon, these are the three guys that you're going to see in the pull-off coming right up. Well, the reason they didn't change anything is they were all over watching the hammer. Everybody else is watching the Dream Girls. They were watching the hammer when he didn't change the sled. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Stay with us. We'll be back for the two-wheel drive pull-off. In 20 years of racing, I've had some great appearing two-wheel drive pulling vehicles. We got the Willys Dirt Slinger, the Jeep. Yep, 572 cubic inches of Arius engine blown with a 1471 high helix SDX lower. You know, everybody that, said they really didn't change much, but I, I, if they didn't, then how are they going to catch Roger Simon, who's about 13 feet ahead of them? The only thing they can change is a little bit in the fuel system and maybe a little bit in the counterweight, and that's about it. He's setting the sled way over to the right again, Steve. Look yep. at that. Yep. They're all going that right groove. The track seems to be set up there. Of course, that's where most of the, the trucks have pulled in the last few events. Getting set. They steer these two-wheel drive machines just like the Unlimited. When the wheels are off the ground, you use the independent rear brakes. But the more you're on that brakes, the more you're slowing yourself down. That's you right. want to set it up where it can, you can fly it like an airplane and not have to brake it till it lands. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. That's his white band. Yeah. That is a monster pull. Great monster. Pull. Nice job. I think he got a, a little bit over the 300 mark there, didn't he? You think so? Just I've, floated that baby. He yeah, did. Just what we were talking about. If you can stay off the brakes, the longer the pull you're going to get. He let it eat that time. He just let her run. Right. Comes off real slow. Pull. Pull. I heard an announcer do that one time in Bowling Green, Ohio. But this was a full pull, 300 feet. Hit it right on the head, Dante. Yeah, well, it, he a uh, little bit over, isn't it? Three, uh, 300 point five feet. Yep. We're getting down to the nitty gritties here. With three the, five. Look at that nice straight pull. I mean, he did not veer at all. Not at all. Just at the end there, when he started digging it. There's our buddy, the hammers. Is he happy? Sad? What? Well, he said once in a while, you know, just for the fans, he likes to put one out the oh, back door. Oh, there he goes. Look at wow. he cheered him on. Yeah, he, you know, he has got. He's getting a softer heart this year. Hey, David Burns. Al Shannon is sitting right here, and uh, I said he wasn't getting too excited about it, but you told me you were hot. Is it hot out there? It's warm in here. It's warm where you were driving. 300 feet, six inches. You're gonna need that extra six inches, you think? How far did I go? 300 and six inches. Oh, that's not too bad. I'll, I'll take that any day. All right, he's going <laughs> to stick with it, guys. A pretty happy Shannon Leishner. And a pretty smart Shannon Leishner. They yes. put more weight on that truck, still within the maximum, but more weight on it, and it went further, man. Yes, there's more grip. Just a little bit more grip, a little bit more horsepower, grip. a little bit different changes. Here's where they put the weight right there in that little box. Yep. Up next, we got Stan Shelton. Amber Marley, North Carolina. Albert is, Marley, is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Albert, I was hoping you didn't catch yeah. me. I, Albert Marley, Albert uh, Marley. You, you got a southern boy over here. So yeah. you, you wrestle him. North Carolina. Carolina. I've been there. I've been in his town in North Carolina. You can name. I've been in his town. All the mob. That's what she said. Where's she from? Well, Stan uh, Sheldon's first pull was 293.6 feet. He's going to need to go seven and a half feet more. I'll tell you what, though. He has got a big ally under the hood of that truck. It's a giant Brian Knox motor. Brian Knox's son is also a crew chief on that. That's team. right. And has a business of building tractable equipment. And, and this is one of his bullets, and he is a genius. Genius. Yes, he, he is. is. Former motorsport. 567 cubic inch Keith Black Hemi. And we know what Keith Black Hemi's can do. Yep. Lots of power. Trying to get it to the pay window right here. Well, there's our uh, yeah. our first runner That's there, Shannon. Shannon Leishner, a little interested spectator, and and here's the interested spectator of all. Right a lot here. of actors in this play. Isn't I'm telling you, the hammer, the hammer's gonna get done. Here we go. Quite there. Oh, close though. Yeah, real close. close. No, not quite there, boy. You know, I think he hit it off the line just a little too hard. Just a little too soon. Yeah, a little bit. They safely unhook our second pull-off contestant. Just one more to go. See what happens here. Yeah, you're right. He's got too much wheel spin right there, which. You know, if you don't get that momentum, that initial momentum going, it's just kind of, it's like burning and smoking the tires in drag yeah, racing. Yeah, exactly. Same thing. It never gets hooked up. Nope. Yeah, Only yeah. unlike a drag racing where you could pedal the thing, that's tough to do here. Yep. You lose that momentum completely. Leaves the wheels be 295.1. Second play. Almost like spinning and setting steel. <laughs> well, that was a better pull than his first one. Yeah, it was. Uh, not that much. David, you got our... Our boy down there, what's up? That's right, Shannon's still leading. You got him by about five and a half feet. Uh, did you see anything there in Stan's run that, that you think uh, put him back? Didn't have enough power for the gear, it looked like. I don't know. He had a pretty darn good run, I thought. All right, what about holding off Roger Simon and the Simon Says? Do you think the 306 inches will hold? It's going to be awfully hard. All right, he's going to stay right here, right at the end of the run, guys, looking straight back on the Simon Says. He's a realist. Yes, he is. I agree with him. It's going to be awfully hard. I don't know, but Rogers seemed to be pretty uh, confident in the pull-off. Here that's him, Roger Simon. Yep. Whoa, wide-eyed. 
Yeah. Okay, can Simon be 300.5? A dream girl. Yes. As always, the great lighting provided for us on Motor Madness comes from our friends at Musco Lighting. Musco, the world-class leader in sports and large area lighting. For more information, call Musco at 1-800-825-6020. Who do you think is lighting Daytona? I'll tell you, if the sun goes out, God's going to call Musco. Personal opinion. Okay, it's time. We've got one more player, the player. Roger Simon is the final two-wheel drive truck in this three-truck pull-off. Down at the far end is Shannon Leister, and I'm sure he's a little concerned. He's very concerned. He told us it's going to be awful tough to stand up to the onslaught of Roger Simon. Dave Burns? Now, of course, as you said, Steve, Shannon has already told us he thinks Roger's going to be pretty tough. Let's ask his wife, Ann, in situations like this where Shannon's been up against the wall, have you seen him do pretty well in the past? Oh, yeah. He knows how to compete and stay in there with everybody else. And he's learned from the master, his father. So. Uh, no coaching from you whatsoever? No, just moral support. There you go, and that's very important. Bill, what do you think? You've seen Roger run before. You know how tough he is. Can Shannon's run hold? It can. He'll be right there. It'll be close. It should be. Shannon made an excellent pull. He couldn't have done anything any better. And we, we changed a few things, so we'll just have... Roger will do his best, I'm sure. He'll be right there close. It'll be a close one. You think he'll need these extra six inches just beyond full here? Yes, I do. All right. It may be that close, guys. Well, they're totally defenseless now, Dream. I'm, yeah. I like to sit there and watch. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what. You got a full pull coming here. I just got a, I just got a, a feeling about this man right here. I believe he's going to blow it out the other end of the building right here. Yeah, I really, I believe he will. In spite of this guy that's getting all this air time right here. This, this guy here was going to be on the dream team, the hammer, and now he's not going to be, he's not going to be on the dream team because he gets more air time than I do, and I don't even know what it does except set up on that deal. And I think if the weight is shifted right, if I believe this, if you add his weight, that other guy would have made a full pull. So I don't, the weight might be in the shifting of the body and the butkus with the hammer. The hammer got more air time than I got shower time. Are if you, you saying will, he's like, in, in you, public, if you will? I think I think he's mad at the hammer. I no, think we're gonna, I'm not. I think you're yeah, going to challenge him to a wrestling match. No, I think you ought to go after him right now. Yeah, I think you're right. He's overexposed. You know, you know, you know who he's looking for. He's looking for Dave Burns. Him, him and Dave Burns have done gone with the wind tonight down on the track. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh man, Where my dream girls up here. Oh. Yeah. There is a problem with the Roger no. Simon entry. Apparently a battery problem. I don't know what the NTPA rules would be or how much time he might have to try to... He's got three minutes. I'm told he has three minutes from the time they tell him to light it and he can't to get it started, right? Three minutes. I got my expert right here on the... I'm backing down the motor there. You always back that motor down because once yeah. you spin it over, you could get raw fuel inside and you can't Kaboom. compress a liquid. No, right? it's Kaboom. not good. Hydraulic, it's called. It's got to go somewhere. So they turn the motor in the reverse direction, and I think they're waiting for a battery, I guess. Well, it takes a lot to crank over those those little motors. This yeah. is all these people needed was more pressure. What's yeah. going on, man? Yeah, he was, more ready, he was ready for him to pull, and uh, now he's getting loose, getting a little warm yeah. in there. Think about the tension that's going on right here. I'll tell you, Rod is having is a tense moment going on right here. How much time we got left? Wind it down here. Get a little vapor lock, maybe. It's hard to say. Burns is running yeah. over there right now. Burns Dave is Burns is going to Of course over. he is. Dave. We'll check in with Roger here. Hey. Roger, what is the problem right now? Uh, the starter went out of it, and we got another backup starter. We'll put it on, start it in front of the motor, and we'll make the pull. Under NTPA rules, are you going to have enough time to get yeah. that done? Well, it's, we got uh, three minutes, and we're okay yet. Okay, and your crew working on here, describe exactly what they're doing. Do they have to unbolt or just sort of unplug? Uh, they just got to unplug it and hook another one up. Okay, they're going to go after it, guys, right now, getting the starter replaced on the Simon Says. You know, this is not the easiest thing in the world to do. You have a backup starter. He's finally got it hooked up, but I've had that problem before. We used the backup starter, and the bolts on the starter were different than the, than the other the starter right. we used all the time, and it wouldn't fit and couldn't get the thing started. Here we go. Kick it over. Come on, boys. Prime it up. That's it. Is he going to pull over. it? He's got it. He'll start. He'll start. There you go. Here we go. He made it two we minutes. Fire the hole. Two minutes and 58 seconds. All right. We come in just in time. Average distance to the pull-off. Look at that. 298.2 feet. 
Well, he's got, I got a feeling, boy, this, this is going to be inches. The, decide, the, the decision is going to be decided in inches. Well, he almost already lost it by a couple of seconds, not yeah. getting his fair well, starter up there. We have a little suspense here. It's going to be a suspenseful pull. I think he's going to duplicate his pull. And I bet, I don't know, whoever wins is going to be like one or two inches on this. I'm, a, I, I'm telling you, Roger's going to pull it all the way out the other, other end. Out the He's gate? 88 yeah. and out the gate? 88 and out the gate, <laughs> Simon says. There's what he's got to be right there, 300.5 feet. Yeah, he's going, he's going a good 303. Uh, I'll, I'll go higher than that. I'll go 37, 39. So 305 is 6 inches. 303 would be what, 4 inches? I'm glad Shannon and Ann can't hear this conversation. I know. <laughs> It'd be brutal on them. He's going to take that right groove again. Yeah. Look, he's way over yet. Big old Dodge. Well, we've seen Dodges, Fords, Chevys, yep. various kinds of motors. We've seen a potpourri of everything tonight. I love that Pictures word. Pictures of everything. A potpourri. That's a potpourri. Right. Of driving a potpourri. styles as well. Yes. All, night. All ages. Look at this. Now the lineup right there. <laughs> I think there's, there's a little serious cash butterflies. at stake here, understand. A few dollars. A few butterflies down there in that line. A few butterflies sitting right there in that cockpit, too. He's going to be in that Cynogen winter circle. Yes, he does. All right, we're hooked. Here we go. Here we go, baby. Here we get a pull here, Rod. Stand on it, baby. Get up on it. Climb it there. I don't, it, no. No. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's close. So it's close. You can't tell by the body language down there. I don't think it's out the back door, is it? No. 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 Not out. I think he's short foot or two. There's there's some people that are that young concerned. man is so the dad's more excited than the kid, right? Yeah. He wasn't even driving. Yeah. Let's go down to David and find out here. David? Well, I, according to what I'm hearing, Shannon Leishner is the winner. Shannon, fantastic job. That little extra six inches, I guess it was just enough, wasn't it? It must have been. I was, I was really worried about Simon. He's such a good competitor. You sound pretty happy about this. A little shaken up. Are you excited? Yeah, a little bit. I've got the heart of going here a little bit. <laughs> now, uh, how about this for your season, then? What kind of confidence does this give you going on in the NTPA the rest of the year? gives us a lot of confidence right now. It means a lot to win out here at Toma. I've never won here before. Dad pulled here a lot of years, and I don't know. If you want, you, I think he's won here once, and it's just a major accomplishment to win at, at Toma. Okay, Ann, now what about this? Were you a little bit nervous down here during that last run, or were you the picture of calmness here? Oh, I was nervous. I want to see him do well, and he deserves to. So. How happy are you for him right now? Very happy. Very happy. All right, and Bill? Uh, we're, we're trying to check. Have you won here at uh, Tomo before? Yeah, I've won once here before and been up in the top, but never in the two-wheel drive. This is quite an honor against the group of trucks that's here. It's just wonderful. So, yeah, assess the competition for Shannon. Put it in perspective for him. How much did he accomplish tonight by winning? He's pulled against the best in the world in the two-wheel drive class right here tonight and, and beaten Roger. You know they all did their best to win, and he just did a little bit better. Uh, the track was perfect the second time around. And, to see him prove we did a couple things different the second time that they probably didn't do all right well folks you're looking at one of the number one pulling families in america today the leishners let's send it back to home base and interesting that dad usually drives that jeep and the kid drives the tea bucket but this was the winning pool of 300.5 and we're eating crow here at home base dan dusty and here's truly steve because all three of us didn't have enough confidence in that kid's pull actually well. we had too much confidence in roger's pull well, well, that's the beauty right a, there. He's a champion tonight, you know, and as he mentioned, as he mentioned earlier, his grandma's, grandma's not feeling too well, and uh, I'm sure he had a little emotion behind his, his winning tonight. We'd like to wish her well and hope she, uh, she gets better soon. Exactly. That was maybe the closest thing to a perfect pull of the entire night that was a good in pull. either of the classes that we've seen. Shannon Leister wins it at 300.5 feet, and he will soon meet up with us, his dream girls in the Synergen Winner's Circle. We'll be right back for that celebration and the big rig pulling trucks right after this. The racing season is heating up and that means a lot of breaking news. You won't miss a thing when you turn to TNN. 
Get all the up-to-the-minute highlights, interviews, and more on Race Day. That's coming your way Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern on TNN Motorsports. Well, I tell you what, this huge crowd has enjoyed what we have enjoyed, and that has been two super competitive classes of NTPA tractor pulling. The Unlimiteds make all the noise and roar. The trucks, though, just a lot of finesse driving those. And we got one more, Dusty, that I think you're, you'll get into, man. Yeah, I'll tell you, it, it's been a great night, and, and, and seen a lot of good pulls, close pulls. Seen a lot of, uh, of uh, guys that just change lanes. Seen a lot of movement. Seen a lot of weight movement. And I think that's what makes this uh, sport such a, a, a great thing to watch because you never know what's going to happen, who's going to blow up, who's going to get in the right groove, who's going to find the right you know, the, the right dirt, as you said earlier. Well, is it raining? Is it not? It's all come tonight. We've seen it all, it, it, and, and it's just been a great, great pull here. And all of this happens in front of the fans in the length of a football field. Well, you know, and, and the action has been going real smooth tonight. I mean, we just had one pull after another with no delays, and it's, it's been a good, yeah. smooth evening for us. And what a great night uh, for Shannon Leister and his yes. family. I mean, they have just really cashed in big time. Yeah, that was that was yeah. great. Yeah, and, and 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 through the demolition derbies, the monster trucks, and and the tractor pulls, uh, tonight we surely have some great contenders for that American Dream team that uh, will be named in in its entirety next Friday night on the special right here on TNN. Motor Madness, right here at your best. You getting thirsty? <laughs> I'm getting real thirsty. <laughs> Let's check out the victory stand. Shannon Leister, his wife, Ann, and his dad all in there. This is the Synergen Victory Circle to the Budweiser Dairyland Super Bowl. And that is the president of Synergen presenting that beautiful trophy. And that is Mike Tyson. And that's the dream, that's the dream girls right there. Getting on there. And only one more class, Mike. Hope you got one more trophy because we have got these unbelievable big rig style tractors with more oh, yeah. turbochargers than you can even count. If large is your style, this is your game, buddy. It's Look it's at the, the size right here. of the bandit here. You know yeah. what? Th that is a 100,000 pound record. It can pick up a 100,000 pounds. Oh, that's a semi there. Okay. It's just looking up to the sled. There is a record like this. This is Gary Tiger Reed, Hastings, Minnesota. 10 years of pulling, the Bandit with a V12 852 cubic inch Detroit diesel yeah. with four, count them, four Whoa. air research turbochargers, oh, baby. Man. You want some power, there's some power for you. Well, the diesel's not complete till it gets a turbochargers. So let's go down to Dave Burns, David. Well, here's one of the semis getting ready to go, the big rigs of the NTPA. You know, it's the newest division on the circuit. These things can weigh a maximum of 20,000 pounds. And one of the interesting thing is they have to have Department of Transportation approved tires on them. They can't do any cutting of any kind on the tires. But one of the cool things about it is that even though they're relatively stock appearing, they do some neat special effects like butane burners in the stack. And you know how many lights you normally see on tractor trailers as they're going down the road? Yeah, lights pretty much everywhere. So these are the big rigs. These are the ones that the people come to see. And boy, they blow with diesel and turbochargers. And amazingly, they do some pretty nifty wheelies, too. I mean, you'd expect it at the two-wheel drive bus, but these guys can get the front end off the ground. Yeah, beautiful trucks right here. So much power. They're going to shake the ground right here. Thunder the arena right here in Wisconsin. What a night. Where there's smoke, That's there's fire. fire. Yeah, look at that. but plenty of oh. oh and it just settles back that's unbelievable there's the uh, hammer guy yeah the hammer the, <laughs> the hammer man. There. the hammer man was there the bandit up, up a little short there i'm telling you got way off track didn't he a little Dante. bit a little bit yeah. he got a little sideways he didn't have a good straight run there and let me tell you what the hammer for the final class of the night he's put everything in there but the kitchen sink I guarantee you. There's, there's a little bit more weight on these heavy. things than the other ones that's for sure here we go here Tiger Reed. He starts off, he's got the wheels cranked to the right, right from the get-go, so he's he's not taking a straight run here. And you know, we all do it. We're guilty of it. When that front ends up in the air, we're still gonna turn those wheels thinking it's gonna help, but it doesn't I, do a darn thing. I've done it upside down. That's <laughs> yeah. how stupid I am. Yes. Now here's the yeah, point take a look of view here. Right here. On top of the stack. Yeah, you're sitting right up on the stack and it's blowing down. Hugging the stack. Yeah. Look at that. 
What a sight. Pretty truck, isn't it? Oh, yeah, indeed. He's got, he's got eight of these rigs. Wow. He's got eight of them? Eight of them. Oh, man. Let's go down to Dave Burns. That was a pretty interesting pull, Tiger. Yeah. It was an interesting pull, Steve, but Tiger, I understand you're not going to take this one. You're going to go again. No, my transmission never shifted into second gear. It just stayed in low gear. So I'm going to go back and check it out and see what, see what happened and come back with second gear. Now, we've talked about this option earlier tonight. Are you going to come right back or are you going to wait till the end of the line? I'll wait till the end. Okay, guys, he's going to go get repaired and give the bandit another run. You know what? That's why we thought the sled was so heavy. It wasn't the sled. He couldn't get out of low gear. Yep. Yeah. God, if he does, where's he going to go? Yeah, but he, he optioned over, going to come back at the end, try it again. First time tonight we've seen anybody do that. Yeah. You know, he... All right, Mike Bester will be up next from Silver Lake, Indiana, interestingly enough, in a truck he had to borrow from Tiger. Stay with us. Still some to go from Toma. Those girls are making a ton of friends. I'm going to tell you what, they really are. A lot of excitement going on. Kids, grown-ups alike, love to dream girls. <laughs> they're not only beautiful, but they're friendly, and everybody's having a good time with yeah, them. They're they're great time. Giving away a lot of Dusty's hats and T-shirts and beach balls. That always helps. All right, let's set up this. This is Mike. Metzger, there's an interesting story here, Dan. Mike uh, had his own truck uh, that broke tonight, and uh, Tiger Reese, Reese, being the sportsman that he is, has loaned Mike his Longhorn truck. Now we don't uh, we don't know too much about the Long Longhorn truck. This just happened uh, a few minutes ago. And, you know, as a friendly gesture, he's letting him run. Well, we saw this truck here one year ago in Motor Madness, and it was competitive. Very strong truck. Yes, it was. Yeah, but, you know, I go by that old thing. If I'm going to loan out a truck, I ain't going to loan out my good one. <laughs> well, three of the four trucks tonight are owned by Tiger Reed. Here we go. Winding them big turbos up. Oh, look at the power. He's got a good run going. Unbelievable it. power. It shifted. Oh, yeah, real smooth there. It shifted. He's out of here, boys. Damn, got him down there, didn't he? He certainly did. I tell you what, Tiger may be wishing he hadn't loaned him that truck. You know, it's right. This reminds me when I raced Gene Snow back back in 1986 at the Southern Nationals. I had to borrow two pistons from Snow. I wound up beating him. <laughs> this could happen tonight for Mike it and Tiger. Could very well happen. But you know that's so terrific that in motorsports today, in some yep. forms of it, this kind of sportsmanship still abounds. Actually, like, most of the forms that I've been associated yeah. with, it's been like, look at those tires cooking. Yes, buddy, good hook up there. Good straight pull. Starting to dig in. Look at the front end of this thing come up at the end. Look at that thing torque. Oh. That's a great looking rig. I love those horns. And a great drive in an unfamiliar machine yeah. for Mike Metzger. And he's got him a full, no, almost a full. 291.8. 291.8. Not bad. Not bad in a loaner truck. It looks like it's trying to tip over, Dave Burns. Well, not bad for a loaner was Mike Metzger's run in the Longhorn. And, Mike, we need to know, was this an all-out loaner, or was there any money transacted at all between you and Tiger? Well, Tiger and I, we transacted all the money this morning. Uh, last night, he wasn't too good a shape. I didn't give him any money until this morning. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go into that. Tell us how smooth this ran. It looked great. Very good. This is a nice truck. First time I've driven the truck. Uh, it was a smooth hook. Uh, but it's going to be a tough one to beat. Now, we're not going to have a pull-off in this division tonight. Do you think that that pull can hold, given what's coming up behind you? Well, it's hard to say being the first time. I mean, it's a good run, good track, but uh, there's some good trucks coming behind me. So, it, uh, but they're going to have to hustle to get around it. You, do you want to give this back to Tiger now or not? Well, I've got one at home I kind of like that I'm, I'm partial to, uh, but uh, this, is, this one feels pretty good. You know, I think once you get your butt in one of those seats, guys, it starts to feel like home, and maybe that's what Mike is all thinking about. Well, they're as big as a house. That'll feel like home. Well, we got one more, actually two more to go. Bernie Pigeon should be up next in the big rig out of Lexington, Minnesota, that he calls Hired Gun, the cab over Peterbilt. And you know what? Last year he finished fifth on the Motor Madness with the Longhorn truck that Mike Metzger just ran. And I remember that truck because it almost tipped over. Remember that yep. thing? It came up so high on the, on the, on the left wheel. I thought the thing was going to turn over sideways. Dusty, did you ever do any truck driving? That's all I do is drive trucks. You know that now, I Steve. Mean, big I got rigs. Big, big rigs like this. I've been in big rigs. Good friend of mine, matter of fact, Carl Malone, 
Oh, sure. Who, you know, call the well, Utah Jazz, and, and and the mailman has a fleet of these trucks yep. that that he uh, pulls across the country, headed across the country. Now I hear, but uh, but Malone, I've been in uh, one of Malone's trucks, and it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. I I even said, you know, I say someday I might gotta go to that Avon truck driving school if I ever get broke. You know, go to Avon truck driving school. And, and get in a truck and just make money trucking across the country and seeing girls and eating in truck stops. I'll be your co-pilot. And I know you would. You I'll like go trucks. with you, buddy. You and I get a truck. We'll have some fun. All right. Now remember, there is no uh, wait a minute. Pull Lucky's back on again. You've got to win it out. Lucky. Right. Lucky is the director's brother. <laughs> He's a star here. He's big. He can win. I'll tell you what. Bigger than you. Uh, here. He handles it. I'll tell you. He does a great job. Here we go. Pigeon out the back door, very close to it. It looks better than 291.8 from here. Yeah, we don't have yeah. the best angle at the finish line, but pretty close to it. Yeah, Amazing the way the surface of this place has held up tonight. I, mean, I can now see that the praise for the gang here that prepares it in Tilma is, is well deserved, richly deserved. Yeah, and the N NTPA, I'll tell you what, what a job. They do right here. Hats off to everybody. Yep, and all wow. the volunteers as well, yeah. because this really. is a non-profit organization that puts yeah. this on here in Toma. Music to our ears. The Kenworth Cab Over. Good straight run. Real oh, yeah. good straight run. That, that thing really hooked up well. I'm kind of partial to the conventional trucks, but I like that good-looking cab over. My first one was a Peterbilt cab over. Just Ladies like and that. gentlemen, we have ourselves a full. Paul, I'd Dave say, Burns. Yeah, I'd say about 307. I don't know. How about it, Dave Burns? What you got for us down there with the new leader? Did I hear 300.7 yep. for Bernie Pigeon? Yes, you, you did, and our new leader. Excellent pull, Bernie. The hired gun for Tiger Reese. Tiger owns this truck, Bernie. I've also heard that Tiger will say that you can outdrive him. Did you just prove that? Uh, we try to. We'll see what he can do on a, on the return trip back here. Uh, what about the boss? If you can outdrive him, what's his best strength? Is that truck better than this one? Nah, I like this one. This is uh, my favorite truck. It's the hardest to drive. And tonight it looked just crystal clear to us, super smooth. Was it absolutely perfect? Uh, we ran real good. Uh, everything went well, and uh, we're real happy with it, and uh, uh, it's a good deal. And, Bernie, by the way, uh, what will happen if you beat the boss? God, he'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie Pigeon, he has the lead for right now. And a well-deserved lead. What a super drive. Ooh. In a truck also owned by Tiger Rees. And this looks like Greg Hibbets, who will be next up as absolutely no oh. one has left this packed house in Toma, Wisconsin, especially not the Dream Girls. And we are back for more of the heavy metal in the NTPA world of truck and tractor pulling. These are tractors and their trucks. They're tractors that pull the 18-wheeler style trailers. And this is Greg Hibbets, and he calls it prohibited. It's an 88 Kenworth with a Caterpillar molar. 893 cubic inches and four air research turbochargers. These guys don't mess around. They bring the guns to this to this outing, and, and don't those, they? Those, they're frightfully expensive, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I had to replace one one time. Yeah. Whoa, right. Yeah. Big mistake. That's a pretty rig. You see the paint job in that thing? Yeah, pretty good. And down at the other end looking on. Yeah. He's got a full pole. Yeah, he's no pull off here. He can win it out yeah, right. He can go with it right here, right? Well, I got Tiger. Yeah. He still has that. He's going to come this back with it. Yeah. Greg Evans finished runner up last year in Motor Madness. Yes, he did. And a lot of the guys will say that he has more power than anybody else. But it's not always power that gets the job done. Yeah. He's driving and got a wheel good start. Speed. Good start right here. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Man. This is a beauty. Oh, that's just going to the grocery. See you yeah. later. Whoa. He's, he's going downtown, oh, baby. Man. He's going downtown what with ball. it. Come with what it. What a ball. Come with it. Yeah. Oh, man. man. He's going to pull that thing 600 yeah. feet. And you talk about throw the gauntlet to Tiger Reese. Oh, wow. Top man. this, Tigger. What I mean, a pull. That was cooking. I guarantee you, that thing didn't waver an inch no, when out of the oh, Dan, Dante, when it started, it just went just on. straight as a yeah. string. Go to, the, go to the store and get some groceries. You can hear that power. Yeah. You get more power than anybody else. Yeah. Look at the turbo boost. Look at it. Wow. That thing was cooking. But look how straight it is. I mean, the front wheels are just barely off the ground. The right front is on the ground just like it should be. 
Oh, man. And all eight of those rear tires are digging in. The prohibited. Maybe a prohibitive favorite now with Look that pull. Watch how straight this is. Yeah. He Look did there. not get out of the groove a, no. a foot. He went on to town with that thing. Good, Smoke. good run. Good Low and black run. coal there. I guarantee you. Whoa. What a pull. Well, David, what do you got for us down there? Well, I don't know. A 317.2 sounds pretty good. Greg, explain to the folks what that little chug was at the end there when she finally lugged down. That little chug there was my turbocharger. I got below my turbochargers. I actually didn't have enough RPMs to stay on top of it, but that's a power track right there, fellas. You just saw a, a, a tremendous track, uh, one of the smoothest runs I've ever taken, and it used all the power that big Caterpillar's got. So did you think you could do a 317 to it all? Well, the truck is very capable. Uh, we, we were working real hard on some consistency, and 317 is a very good run for that truck. Yeah, I think we saw something tonight, guys. Pretty good. Well, I'm impressed. Paul, oh, unbelievable. Can Tiger Rees top 317 feet? Greg Hibbett said himself, that's the prettiest pull I've ever made on the best track. Right here in Tom, let me remind you again that next Friday night, in and Motor Madness. It's a two-hour special whip, Dusty Rhodes. Find out who's a member of the Dream Team. Tune in next Friday night at a special time for a special show, 9 p.m. Eastern, TNN Motor Network. Well, we've got two very concerned parties. They're cheating on you. Look, yeah, and look at her. That a, that a, he, he's better looking than you. i got to give him that. Brother, I'm going to tell you what. Was that Will Bird? I believe she it was. was. With the old guy. I believe so. But I think it did look like it resembled Will. Okay. Oh. Guys, we've got drivers on both oh, ends look of this, this racetrack. Yeah. The most interested guy has to be down at the far end of the racetrack because he could get punted out of the lead here. Greg Hibbets could be beaten Three, by Tiger Reed. Oh, that's wow. science fiction number. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, he hit up to outer space. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a little problem. Uh-oh, got a problem here. You know, he's going to have to, and he knows it, get the turbo boost up real real high and that's what i think he's trying to do right there is make some adjustments is that true to him to a wastegate on the turbo uh, opening up a wastegate on the turbo oh wow and make inhibit sweat yeah him hibbit, out look at hibbit nothing like on the spot tune-ups well open the hood so you can get a little more room on it well this is one crafty guy i mean he owns three of these trucks doing something right Either that or he really is a bandit. You know, it was, it was interesting. Greg Hibbets, he said, I want to win, but more importantly, is to give the crowd a good showing. I think sure. he gave him a good showing. Oh, tonight. man, the place went nuts. Unbelievable. They love this stuff, man. In this part of the country, very agricultural town, beautiful town of about 7,500 people, and they're really into trucks and tractors and farming and all those good things. You know, Tiger has the Super Boss truck, which ran 144 miles per hour at Bonneville Salt Flats in 1976. You know, this could be huge disappointment yeah. for Tiger. I mean, he's loaned out one truck. He's trying to get some more boost, we think, out of the turbocharger. No, oh, like also has a, he has a there. kill switch problem. Right. He has a kill switch problem as well. And if he can't get that kill switch, he, he's not going to It's run. grounded out, no. apparently, and the motor is not going to start. No. Yeah, you know what, guys, we're watching him, you know, getting ready to look for this thing, wanting to make this run. Opportunity knocking on the door right now. Butterscotch, you know Butterscotch. Yeah. You guys know Where's Butterscotch. Butterscotch? Well, I took, him, I took him to Nashville, you know. No, I'm going to take him again. Next... I'm talking about really? next Friday night, 9 o'clock, on the special, Butterscotch and me in Nashville, Tennessee. You're taking Butterscotch and yeah. Steve and me. Yes. Your compadres. What did we do wrong? Side by side with this man all year what long. What did we do wrong? We've gone through the hard knocks yeah. with you. I mean, it was all singing. All the great country singers were there, and then Butterscotch got up there. And well, okay, Tiger Reese has a little bit of time left to get this thing started. If he can't, the win will go. To Greg Hibbets. We'll tell you what happens when we come back. You're back just in time to see the face Here of Greg Hibbets. Here you go. Tiger Reese launches. Got a shift yeah, in New York. Know that time. 317 no. feet. No, no, he ain't gonna make it, boy. No. He ain't gonna make it. Oh, he's tried, he's no. tried. No, no. Oh, Bogged man. it down. And our winner, Dave. Well, Greg Hibbets, you hung on. Tiger wasn't able to do it. How do you feel? I feel pretty doggone good. This is uh, year number three here for us at Toma, and three is a lucky charm. So, 
feel pretty good. And a lot of people said, guys, that he was one of the best, most improved drivers last year. They don't give an award for it, but if they did, Greg Hibbets would have gotten it. We'll give him the Dave Burns Award for the most improved driver. I'll tell you, Burns is going to sleep well tonight. He Burns has run from one end of this 300-foot course to the other with no golf cart, no support system, just on his own with cameraman Jeff Kelly. And they've done a fabulous job. Ah, uh, they're young guys. Oh, yeah. Okay, I believe we have uh, one big surprise left. Is that right? Some kind of a really strange truck, the likes of which maybe uh, nobody has seen. It's a big 100 ton <laughs> wow 100 count them tow truck it's like the biggest tow truck That's ever a, built it's waiting it's in boy. the is wings he gonna be pulling what's he gonna be i doing? think he's gonna hook to the sled and make a pull i don't know look at this baby beautiful he's truck hook, right he's here. gonna hook to both sleds what well, do you figure that bigger than the sled. 20, 24 hour service too you can get this <laughs> to come to come out to your house you know what i mean now they're That's just showing it off call. they're just you, showing it off if yeah. you don't pay and you get like repossessed this thing can come out and take it away. Have you got a 100-ton car? It. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need it. Just pick it up and carry it. <laughs> Look how many axles this thing's got. Whoa, That's baby. Bad boy there. I'd like to have a die-cast model of that. <laughs> I can't afford the real thing. That's because I don't want the real thing. <laughs> oh, okay, and here's like Victory it. Circle for uh, our final winner. Oh, the the Cup yeah. From there. Mike Dyson going to Greg Hibbets, who has won the big rig class here at the Budweiser Dairyland Super Bowl. A big slug of milk as appropriate here, <laughs> yeah. more so than it is. In it's the appropriate right now, but a little later on, something else might be appropriate. You see there, certainly a contender for the Dream Team, Dante Pastorini. Big special NASCAR weekend coming up for July weekend on the 3rd on Friday night, 9 o'clock. Dusty Rose, the American Dream Team, will be named. So much going on. Butterscotch in Nashville. Charlie Daniels. All the stars that were there and all the stars going to be there and all the stuff that we will be doing is going to be fabulous. But I want to say to you two guys, we've been to, we've been to Demolition Derby right around. Yes, yep. I know. Yeah, Nate. I yep. brought my girls yep. with me, right? Yep. I've never seen them have a bigger time. But, but the pulling that went on here, I'm talking about the tractor pulling that went here, for me, is my favorite. This is it. These guys know what they're doing and i guarantee you this is really the deal in tpa hats off hats off i can't agree with you more. come here girls they come I my girls said back. They might as well decorate yeah. this set with the dream girls one more time and remember as dusty said next friday night an hour later starting time but only a two-hour show at nine o'clock the dusty the dream team yeah. we might make the cut faster you think you know, we just, just i don't think i don't think we have a chance yeah, we, we had such a great time in nashville you know what girls you want to throw them a kiss here Remember that? Okay, on three. Wait a minute now. Have a good time. We're getting ready for Nashville next week. Big special going on. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to throw a little kiss right now. Ready? Throw a kiss. Mwah. <laughs> All right, that's it. There you go, Steve. Well, I am Steve Evans, or I yes. think I am, and this is Dan Pastor, and you know the dream that Dave Burns did a workmanlike job in the pits tonight. We hope you enjoyed uh, the pictures we brought you as much as we did sitting here. A little rain must fall and apparently we're getting a little rain right now but it's not going to dampen the spirits too, of these fans too late because they're going to stick around go into the pits check out their favorite pullers get some autographs heck it's only five minutes to ten here in the central time zone as this giant record goes down the racetrack and there we see the pull that won it in the two-wheel drive class here we see the pull that won it in the unlimited and that's about it from Toma, Wisconsin. We hope you enjoyed Motor Madness. We'll see you next Friday night. See you next Friday! Motor Madness. Brought to you by...